be in chat on Zoom here with us. We're going to put him in the Zoom chat. We're oh, live. Open the, the chat window. I'll do that right now. Yeah. That's, that's what oh, it's over the right side blocked by something else. Darn it. <laughs> oh, well. I'll just do this when chat when I need to read chat. Yeah, I think that's good. It's a good look for yeah, you. Man. I can see it right there. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're live. <laughs> this is we're faffing about. Faffing, that's a wonderful word. It is a Faffing? good word. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to throw the peas in there. This isn't that kind I was, of show. That's what I thought he said. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Faffing, I Very heard different. faffing for the first time in the, uh, in the 70s. And uh, I heard it from uh, a person who was singing with Metropolitan Opera. And he was a Brit, but he was a compromario. You know, he did all the small parts and he was British. And, and he was, you know, we were all having fun at this dinner party. And he turned to me and he said, you know, all they're doing is faffing. And I said, what does that mean? You know, I was in my 20s. And, and he told me, it's just, you know, airy persiflage, which is, a, which is another, persiflage. you know, sort of a Britishism from, from uh, W.S. Gilbert. You know, Gilbert Sounds like a wonderful alias, too. Also huh? known as Eric Persiflage. That would be a great name. Yeah. Hmm. So, guys, welcome to Voice of Palooza, which has already started in mid-program. Uh, <laughs> we are all here today to have a great deal of fun. This is our final programming on the main stage for Voice of Palooza. All week long, we've been raising funds with fun we've had uh, a lot of voice actor panels we've had people come in and show you new mods that were going to be happening we've had gamers doing streams hundreds and hundreds of streams all over the globe for the past week trying to raise funds to defeat alzheimer's disease and that's what we're doing here today the hashtag is n-a-l-z and that's what we're going to do. John shows you down there, right behind John's head. You can see it's the longest day. That is the day, the longest day of the summer we, we choose to fight. And we're taking it like an entire week long. In fact, some of our streamers are going to continue on through next week. But on the main stage, this is it. This is Voice of Palooza Prime. This is where we're going to come out today. And we're going to have tons of fun. Now, I'm warning you, if you have sensitive ears... <laughs> They may be singed just slightly during this. This is an 18 plus broadcast. That's right. It's Fucking A. a. <laughs> exactly right. So I'm hoping that this lovely Sunday morning, you <clears throat> went confessed everything you're going to confess <laughs> to the fun you're going to be having this afternoon. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, in Voice of Palooza, we take movie scripts, we take television programming, we take uh, song lyrics, and we read them in character voices. We basically defile some of your favorite programming. Uh, we are also going at the end use suggestions from right here in this chat room to build a brand new video game that has never been seen before, will probably never be seen again, and really probably should never be seen in the first place. It's going to be a hilarious train wreck. So before we start, I want to <laughs> go around the room here uh, and introduce everybody. But before we do that, I just want to say we are here to defeat Alzheimer's. I've had it in my family. I lost my mother. I lost my grandmother, uncles. I have other family members who are losing in-laws at this very moment as we speak. We have all of our gamers and folks from around the globe who've reached out to us and told us their stories this week that are all very moving. And we are doing something about this. So far, you have helped us raise nearly $26,000 for Alzheimer's research going to be going to the Alzheimer's Association who do great things since 1980. I mean, up until by the time 2030 gets here, they're going to be 78 million people with dementia alone in the world. And we're talking about 11 million caretakers that aren't being paid that have to take care of that. And the devastation that causes, that it causes families when they lose somebody before they lose them. It's, it's just a horrible disease. And uh, it, it, it breaks hearts, it breaks families, and the Alzheimer's Association is there to reach out a hand, to provide support, to get people the information they need, sometimes to help provide them the guidance to facilities, and to help look for research to find a cure. Because in our lifetime, we are going to find a cure. And because of you, that's even more possible. So if you get a chance today, this is our last big 
panel. I want you, you're going to see a thing in here. If you type in uh, exclamation point charity, it's going to pop up and show you just how you can donate. If you scroll down the screen here on Twitch, there's a button that you can donate. Add enough for a cup of coffee, you know, a dollar, five dollars. You want to add more? You want to donate it to somebody? Let us know in the chat who you donated it for and we'll let folks know. Okay. So I want to thank you all for everything that you're doing. Um, I've talked an awful lot right now for somebody who's really kind of speechless about this, but there just aren't enough words for me to be able to properly say thank you to you, to say thank you to Kenneth Vigu, who's uh, helped put this together, and to all of our wonderful, wonderful voice actors who have come together to help make voice appearance a, a great big fix to the face of all Alzheimer's disease. So that being said, we did promise fun for funds. And that's what we're going to do right now. So let's just make our way around the room. We're going to start with Jan. Jan, tell us who you are and what you've done. How do we know you? Oh, hi, Wes. I'm Jan. Hello, um, Jan. Hi. I'm Jan. Okay. Uh, so I'm Jan, and uh, we've established that. And it is, a, what if I worked on Fallout um, 3 and 4, 76, did a couple of things on um, Star Wars Old Republic and Casa Grande's Loud House and Mickey Mouse Fun House, which just got renewed for another season, which is very cool. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and a couple of things are coming out that I can't talk about, but um, very excited and grateful. <laughs> so, the NDAs very... are all in place, right, guys? We all That's have right. them locked right. down. Yeah. Yeah. So, and very, very happy to be here for such an, an uh, uh, important reason. So, thank you. Great to have you here, Jan. So let's, uh, we got John Patrick Lowry and Ellen McLean, uh, who, uh, contrary to what it looks like, uh, are not really in separate abodes. They're in the same house. You they guys just don't like being in the same room other, together. Right? That's right. <laughs> you guys are very close. You're closer than most people who have been in games together uh, normally are. She, 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 li Ellen likes me so much that if we were in the same room, we would go from PG 13 to X immediately. So, Let's you know, we would just <laughs> bow, 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 bow. the two dirtiest, two dirtiest animals in the barnyard you know what they are brown, chicken, you too. brown cow. Oh, no. nice. Okay. Very nice. Um, <laughs> which of us should go first? I'll go first because Ellen's shy. Um, so I'm best known as Mrs. GLaDOS, uh, Mrs. Ellen McLean. Um, but I'm also known as the sniper in Team Fortress 2 and about seven heroes in Dota 2 that I know John St. John is in too. Um, uh, Agent Grey in Matrix Online, uh, Balaram the Great Eagle in uh, Lord of the Rings, War of the North. Oh, Warden Harms in Infamous. <clears throat> um, uh, this, I mean, I've been in All about- All the male citizens in Half-Life. In Half-Life 2, right. Uh, uh, the the radio guy in Don't Left for Dead. Don't forget Spy Fox Breakfast Re cereal. Spy Fox Breakfast Cereal, Betrayal at Antara. My favorite, Championship Bass Fishing. Mm. <laughs> uh, probably the most successful video game of all did time. You, did you play the sound of the reel? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I, was, I was the bass. Um, it was uh, it was all deep method stuff, but uh, it, was, it was something I'm very proud of. Um, uh, and so a lot of video games, and uh, I also uh, uh, produce uh, uh, audio dramas. I play uh, Sherlock Holmes in the classic adventures of Sherlock Holmes and the further adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Um, and I've written a novel that won an award. And I've, Dancing with Eternity. And, uh, I'm, and I'm also a composer, and I'm working on a musical now. And... You know, I try to keep busy. You are a man of many talents. And from what yeah. we understand, you smell great. <laughs> he does smell great. According to one person, that's that's the truth. Yes, yes. I have many smell. talents and no income. Anyway, you know, it's uh, it's good. That, that's well, what I do. Speaking of the person who smells you, uh, Ellen McLean. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, most uh, famously, probably, I am the voice of GLaDOS. Mm. <laughs> Yes. And the administrator in Team Fortress 2, Victory. And I'm also the big, tall robot, Gypsy Danger, in uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pacific Rim. And they decided that that name sounded too much like a stripper. So in the <laughs> next movie, 
uh, Gypsy Danger became a Gypsy Avenger. Oh. Still well, it sounds more like a dominatrix stripper. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just sounds it just sounds like the sequel after that stripper had a very hard night and was coming back for uh, for for justice. Uh, we call yeah. it a sequin sequel. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a couple of voices in Dota. And you seem uh, very excited about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and basically, I just have fun living in Seattle, singing as much as I possibly can. Well, as as people do in Seattle, generally. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have Matthew Mercer, who is here with us today. Uh, Matt, thank Hi. you for, for coming out and joining us. Uh, uh, I, I understand that there were uh, there was a lot of uh, carnage that went on recently the, that you we're not involved in, but uh, uh, I, I was not able to get out of uh, into this week of Voice of Palooza without a whole lot of angst because of what went on on a Critical Role last week. Oh, 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 yeah. There, it's 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 been a lot. A dear friend of mine has been running a really, really intense game on our channel and in the world of Alexandria that uh, has been causing all all manners of delightful <laughs> emotional turmoil and tears and it's just delicious and i love it um uh before we jump into anything for calamity john, john did you say you were in battle of betrayal and antara betrayal and antara yeah were you in that oh oh no i played that growing up and i love it so much and that Aww. just that set me back i had no idea that's so awesome anyway sorry uh <laughs> fanboy moment yeah. yeah it happens yeah uh yeah hi everybody i'm matthew mercer i'm a voice actor uh as well i i'm uh, cole cassidy in overwatch uh rex are a number of other characters through warcraft universe uh yusuke kitagawa in persona 5 gangplank and the wolf in league of legends uh mccready in fallout 4 with some wonderful people uh as well as the um dungeon master for our main critical role show and the legend of Oxmark and Emily series. Very cool. And uh, uh, the uh, last of the John, somebody, somebody online today basically saw our lineup and they're like, that's a lot of Johns in there. And I said, listen, you say that in all the bathrooms, but evidently <laughs> that is what's going on right here today. And one of our biggest Johns is John St. John. Tell us about yourself, sir. Well, I'm not the biggest Johnson clearly, but I am one of the bigger Johns on the panel. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, you guys know that I'm the Duke Nukem voice from way back when. Um, let's see, what else am I on? Uh, I'm the pirate in World of Warships. I'm Dusty and Rad Rogers. Uh, I'm Jack Boyd and This is the Police. Uh, Jadis Heskel in Bombshell. Enigma, Bloodseeker, and Kunkka in Dota 2. So I'm in that with uh, Ellen. And uh, in Guild Wars 2, I'm top, the five of the top characters along with John Patrick Lowry. But nobody beats Axe. Axe is Axe. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done, I don't know, uh, a couple hundred games over the years and, and hundreds of voices for different games. Uh, I've been in, uh, since I'm uh, the legendary John St. John, that's what people call me now. I think that means a nice way of saying really fucking old guy who started doing this back in 1994 professionally. Um, I'm in games that you all grew up with and you didn't even know I'm in them. I'd show you the list here, but I on my iPad, I have to scroll five times, five times to cover all the games that I've been a part of over the years. Um, uh, being in all the video games, of course, afforded me the opportunities to uh, do convention appearances over the years. Uh, some of my fondest memories are cons where I appeared with Matt Mercer and we were playing Guitar Hero with Stephen Leach. And, and, yeah. and Gwendolyn Yao was there that year and, and, and Eric and so many cool people. And, and Matt was one of the coolest people I've ever met at convention. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm trying not to fanboy over you, but you're one of those um, acquaintance friends that I'd love to have time to hang out with again because you were such a pleasure. Um, uh, and, and Ellen and John, us, we go back. Way, I'm sorry, what was us, that? I was going to say the three of us, uh, you, me, and uh, Matt were the very first voice of palooza panel that's right ever back way back i think it was magfest number nine number nine yeah yeah, yeah it might have been eight nine. eight was my first one uh you maybe know, you just didn't invite me that year because you didn't like me there was something. no voice of palooza the first year first voice oh, of palooza, I see. Though, was the i've got a picture matt of you with uh three of my sons and all of you guys look like zygotes standing there so <laughs> <it> was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that, that was one of the greatest times in, in my uh, uh uh convention life 
up until the last few years when I started my own convention called King Con Cruise that I'm the host and owner. And I have celebrity friends like Ellen McLean and John Patrick Lowry and DC Douglas and Wes Johnson and Mike Ross and, uh, and many other guests. Richard Epcar is coming next year along with his wife, Ellen Stern Epcar. Um, all these friends who come along and we actually interact with all of the fans by having dinner with them every night and by doing adventures with them like scuba diving or kayaking or what have you. And and when we were in the Bahamas on our last cruise, are you looking, Wes? Wes might recognize this. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wes bought this pipe for me in Nassau. Yeah, I thought, Wes I, thought knows it, that, I looked at it and I thought, this seems very John St. John. <laughs> right. It, it doesn't look like a, a pipe you play, does it? it? It specifically has a place to put weed and so wes is assuming that i'm some pot smoking crazy dude he's right uh -huh. but to right. assume it is just I not know, right. no, i just thought you were the pie-eyed <laughs> piper and that you'd be taking this thing and trailing people around after you everywhere you go that's all well anyway um so from video games to conventions and now uh having a, a cruise called king con cruise that's that's my deal that's who i am and and um, i'm wearing a general... shirt that i bought on the very first king con cruise <laughs> You're wearing sure it. I bought, right. I bought in Nassau because King Kong Cruise is such a gas. And I just, you know, like to resonate with that kind of energy. And not Thank only you, that, man. he's completely Donald ducking it in that shirt, just like right. he did on the cruise. So, right. Yeah. Well, but I think we can safely say that Jan is the only one here wearing pants. I mean, I think <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Legitimately, she can <laughs> prove it. We have no proof whatsoever. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And well, I don't I, care to prove it right now. No. Guys, one thing we're going to do, if you'll go into your Zoom chat really quickly, we have a bunch of quotes in there, and oh. I want you to just sort of grab one. Some of them are for, their, we found these on Twitter. People sent these in to us from Twitter. So you can give the name, uh, the handle of the person, and uh, read some of these. Um, oh, cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Can I do that one from Lead pa Paint Man? From Lead Paint Man? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> oh, uh, Lead, lead, pa <laughs> lead paint, paint Man. That's dangerous. Yeah. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Yeah. He's dangerous. Um, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Very nice. So the soap see, opera. Done in the it voice is. of Duke Nukem. It's a soap opera there. So that's how uh, we're that's kind funny. of doing those things. So let's, uh, Ellen McLean, you have one here. And what I'd love to do, this is from a young lady by the name of Jenny Cat 5 And it was long. We said, send us some quick little quotes some quick little quotes and uh, what was sent to us was this novel. So what I'm going to ask for <laughs> is for you to do the actual uh, quotes from GLaDOS, but to have it narrated by John Patrick Lowry. Could you do that, John? Sure, uh, sure. Yeah, start reading the novel written by Jenny Cat 05 and, and GLaDOS will throw in the voices along the way. There is a certain point in the campaign for Portal 2 where GLaDOS tries to kill you after you sabotage the neurotoxin supply, turrets. After the turrets fail GLaDOS, she tries the neurotoxin. Now, normally Wheatley comes zooming out of the tube, and but let's say in this instance, the neurotoxin works. When that happens, the player opens the day console and activates SV Cheats 1, which is the command that enables cheats. They type no clip and no clip out of the box. And then GLaDOS reacts by saying something like, Oh, oh you're, you've you're muted, muted yourself. There. You're muted. You've, you, you've muted yourself. Something like, What we have here is failure <laughs> to communicate. What did you just do? Wait, we could do, you know. How did you? Oh. Did you really just activate SV Cheats 1 and activate no clip? That is not even fair. Not only are you stubborn, but you are just cheap. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I Very think it nice. Would be, oh. I was going to say, this goes on for about three more pages. Uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do, since basically what, what somebody was probably trying to do was saying, uh, please have Ellen McLean narrate my entire new mod uh, during Voice of Palooza. We'll go ahead and cut it off there. But I think Jenny Cat got enough out of that one, don't you guys? Um, I've got a new line that's coming through right now, and uh, I'm going to send this one to you, Jan, directly. Wes, Take a look uh... at this line. 
if I may, I want to uh, share something. So we just crossed $26,000 raised. Um, wow. We've had donations pouring in. So Shia, thank you very much for that $100 donation. Shia. Uh, Molly, uh, thank you much for that $12 donation. Uh, Shia, she had another $100? Good Lord, Shia. Um, Shia. Wow. Thank Peter you. Is, that, is her 35. last name Gorath by any chance? Shia Gorath. Shia, Shia Gorath. <laughs> My lovely wife. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Peter Mueller, $35. Jordan Pettit, $20. Uh, she had another $20. Good Lord. Hey, Jordan, thank you. Jordan used to be a regular member of our Tequila Tuesday meetings back during pandemic times. Yeah. And so thank you, Jordan. That was very sweet of you. We appreciate your help. Amazing. And and we do have a uh, Jordan, since Jordan made a donation, did have something that she wanted us to read. And I think it's for both Matt and I to read. But oh, let's I go with it. Jan. Let's go with Jan first. Jan, uh, yours came in. Uh, who is it? someone in uh, someone in chat just threw this one at us here. Uh, that was absolutely will. So go right ahead. OK, I'm going to do uh, Corinne, the dog catcher from an episode on the Loud House. <laughs> Pants are leg prisons. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> I think I've heard you in the grocery store occasionally, that, that, that character. Uh, so let's go with Jordan Pettit. Uh, Jordan just made a big donation. So thank you, Jordan. We, are, we, we, we love you. We appreciate you. So um, the, she wants uh, me to be Mr. Burke from Fallout 3, uh, trying to convince you. And uh, is it uh, Yotaro Kujo? Uh, Jotaro Kujo. Jotaro Kujo. Uh, to blow up. So here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> sure. Jotaro Kujo. I want you to wipe Megaton off the map, and you will be handsomely rewarded. Yeah. How about you start planning to wipe you off the map, Mr. Burke? But oh man, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. So that's how that works. And uh uh, you've got more quotes that are coming in, right, Kenny? You have some that people have sent in. And yeah, Wes, I've got a ton uh, that came in from Discord and other ones that replied to me on Twitter. Do you want me to drop them to you or just drop uh, them in no, chat here? Why don't you, why don't you just drop? We'll, we'll wait for a second uh, and we'll have you and I say, Kenny, drop us some a new fresh quotes. If you'll just drop us a whole set of new fresh quotes that we can pull from. Uh, we're going to do a, a couple of uh, scripts here really quick. Now, can you just say, Kenny, drop one? That would be great. Just say, <laughs> Kenny, drop one. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, drop one. George Wolf, thank you. $100 donation. Thank you very much. Yeah. George, thank, thank you. George. Legend. George. Awesome. My good friend, George. Thank you. George. Well, he's now George. everybody's George. good friend, George. Thank we you, George. appreciate George. 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 So there's a gentleman by the name of Keaton Patty that I was following on Twitter. And Keaton Patty uh, is a writer, does things for, uh, he was on The Onion, he does uh, things for Comedy Central, he does things in, in, I believe, so many magazines. Very funny fellow, but he started writing these things called I Forced a Bot, and it's a number of different books. What he does is he takes all the information in the world and he shoves it into the computer, and then he forces the computer to actually write a script based upon <laughs> based upon his uh his little story there so so an ai script is what you're saying is it, it is it? basically an ai written script and as you know ai will be taking over the world and it's incredibly intuitive it'll be taking over our voice jobs it already took two from me uh, did it take two from you mm -hmm. well th this is your chance of getting a little revenge back we're going to bring to life the story of batman that's right batman as written by a bot. But we're going to need a couple of uh, castings here. Uh, who do we think would be the best person to play Batman themselves? Is there anybody in our room who thinks, who, who do you think it should be? Who is Jan going Jones. to play Batman? Jan. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Jan. Do, Jan. do, 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 Bat Jan. Jan. Let's, <laughs> let's, hear, let's, hear your, let's hear your Batman there, Jan. I'm Batman. And I like... Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. That, no, nothing more. Roll achieved. I think we're all. Now, I need to know who's going to be playing Alfred. Alfred. Did you say you wanted to be Alfred earlier, John? Oh, yes. I, I'd be happy to play Alfred for you. Yes. All right. Well, yes, sir. yes, sir. I'm here for you, sir. Yes. And how about, how about the Joker? The Joker. What about Matt? Have you done the Joker? I'm not to the Joker. I can do Joker. You want to do Joker? Joker will be Matt Mercer. 
and we need to have uh, the, for the narrator. It, remember the old Batman narrator? Who was the old Batman? It wasn't Gary Owens. Who was it? No, I think it was the guy who was actually the producer of the Batman show. Oh. Wow. In the old in the 60s series, you know, Batman stands next to his Batmobile, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Can you can you do that for us, John? Or do you want to? Sure. Uh, all right. So you will be uh, the narrator on this one. Uh, and so basically everybody have their script. It's only what's the name of the script page script. It's just Batman or as we would like to refer to it, Batman. It is conceivably written by Keaton Patty. He's on Twitter at Keaton Patty, but it is actually written by a bot, by an AI. Oh, oh it's this called Bat Bot B Keaton Patty. <clears throat> yes, that's it. Bat bot. Yes. Thank you. Bat bot. Bat Thank bot. You. So loading. we are going to loading. We are going to do a production now. In this production, uh, the narrator will be John Patrick Lowry. Oh yeah. Batman, played by Jan Johns. <laughs> Alfred. The Faithful Butler by John St. John and the Joker, Matthew Mercer. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time anywhere, or the second, or the third, we or now have Batman or Botman as portrayed by the voice of Palooza players. <laughs> Batman. Interior, traditional Batcave. Batman stands next to his Batmobile and uses his Bat computer. He's sometimes Bruce Wayne, sometimes Batman, all times orphan. This is now a safe city. I have punched a penguin into prison. Alfred, Batman's loyal butler, loyal battler, carries a tray of goth ham. Eat a dinner, Mattress Wayne. Uh, mattress? Mattress Wayne. An explosion explodes. The Joker and Two-Face enter the cave. Joker is a clown, but insane. Two-Face is a man, but attorney. <laughs> no, it is Two-Face and One-Face. They hate me for being a bat. Batman throws Alfred at Two-Face. Two-Face flips Alfred like a coin. Alfred lands heads up, which means Two-Face goes home. <laughs> It is just you and I, the Joker. Bat versus Clown. Moral enemies. I am <laughs> such a freak. Society is bad. You drink water. I drink anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I drink bats, just like a bat would. Batman looks around for his parents, but they are still dead. This makes him have anger. He fires a bat rocket. The Joker deflects it with his sick sense of humor. What a clownly power. I have never followed a rule. That is my rule. Do you follow? I don't. <laughs> Alfred, give birth to Robin. Oh, go Alfred. ahead now, John. Begins this is her. very method. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Alfred begins the process since it is his job. The Joker now <laughs> has a present in his hand. He juggles it over to Batman. Be Bat Day, Birthman. <laughs> Batman opens the present since he's a good guy. It contains a coupon for new parents, but it is expired. This is a Joker joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very that nice. Horrible. It is. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think anyone, physical, human, real person, could write a better script about Batman. Everything was there that you'd ever want. Yeah. The Can Joker jokes. Confusing words. Uh -huh. Confusing words. Now, and we, Alfred giving birth. We uh, didn't have, let's see, you, uh, Ellen, you and I were not in anything there. So uh, let us, let us. Look, I couldn't tell. <laughs> You couldn't tell that you we felt like you were in it, didn't no. you? You felt I like I it. I was in it. <laughs> I what? was one of the parents. <laughs> one of the discerning parents. Yes. Mm. Well, let Holy us let us open up Titanic. I, I think it's time. I Why? could make this uh, John Patrick Lowry and uh, and Ellen McLean. We could do that as a romance kind of thing. Uh, but John, would you mind if I tapped you on the shoulder and jump in here? Also, not Wes, not we're, not we're getting an avalanche of donations. Thank you, Shadow Strife, for the $50 donation. The Rick for $100. Taco Cat for $100. Uh, sadly lost his dad to Alzheimer's dementia at 59. So sorry. Oh, wow. That, wow, that's, wow. Such, that's a young 
Sorry about that. Topic. Way too, uh, way too early to go. Ms. Max, so Popcorn Lizard, uh, Jessica Starr, uh, Shia Drunk, and Shia <laughs> loves charity donations. Uh, and Oikake Akabe, thank you very much. Thank Great. you. That's wonderful. Yeah, no, now, no. Uh, Wes, please hop in. There's no one I would want more to sink <laughs> into icy water than you. So. <gasps> Thank you. I, that that means the world to me. It really does. I know it does. I know it does. So uh, we have Rose and Jack from Titanic, but we need to know who, what character voices you want Ellen and I to use as we portray these. So anybody in chat have an idea of what characters we should do in order to bring Titanic to life right here? Who on is the this Voice guy, Luke Chad, Day? you keep talking about? Where's Chad? I don't see Chad on here. Chad is the Chad Fallout 76 podcast, and that is our Twitch room that we're in. And Chad is uh, was was in the portal play that we had earlier this week. Uh, oh, I Chad missed that. Made, I'm sorry. I missed that. That's OK, Chad. It, it, well, there'll be repeats, right? Am I right about that, uh, Ken? Is that people can still see that? Oh, very good. Well, was nobody, it hilarious? Someone said Lucy and LaChance oh. uh, as Rose. Oh, Lucy and Lachance as Rose trying to murder Jack. So you want Lucy and Lachance to play the Rose role. And uh, that would mean that you would be Jack, Ellen. I'm uh, going to do it as the administrator. So you will be Fortress Jack. Two. Yes. All right. So I will yes. be uh, I will be Rose, the ingenue as Lucy and Lachance. Yes, and, and you, you will are. be the administrator. And this is the promise scene. And in this scene, Jack and Rose are floating on the ocean on a huge, huge piece of ice that 14 people could be on. But for some reason, Rose wants it all to herself. And Jack is floating in the water, slowly, slowly freezing to death. And we begin with the voice of Palooza players. I love you, Jack. No, don't say your goodbyes, Rose. Don't you give up, don't you do it. I am so cold. You're going to get out of this. You're going to go on and you're going to make babies <laughs> and watch them grow. And you're going to die an old lady, warm in your bed. Not here, not this night. Do you understand me? I can't feel my body. <laughs> Rose, listen to me. Winning that ticket was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm it brought me to you. <clears throat> and I'm thankful, Rose. Oh, I'm thankful. You must do me this honor. Um, Promise me you will survive, that you will never give up, mm. no matter what happens, no matter how hopeless. Promise me now and never let go of that promise. I promise I will never let go. How are you feeling? Never let go. <laughs> I promise I will never let go, Jack. Jack? Over Jack. time. Oh, there you are. I will always love you. <laughs> and into the night they float off on ice and Jack becomes a human popsicle. The end. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was full of emotion. I wonder, could anyone, uh, is anyone out there uh, crying uh, at that emotional scene there? I choked up a little bit. <laughs> so, I did Goddess too. Nerd said, screw the original Oblivion death scene. Lucian should have died this way. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have, uh, Ken, do we have any uh, palate cleansers? We have any, any lines that uh, we can read out here? We've got uh, quite a few that I'm dropping in chat now. All right, Ken, Ken, drop them. <laughs> drop one. Drop one, Ken. <laughs> Drop one, Ken. <laughs> and Ken, when you do it, go. No. <laughs> you won't do it. 
I'm the only fool who'll do that on camera. <laughs> John will, by the way, uh, drop one on camera for you. It's one of the main things on his cameo page. <laughs> page i mean you know all right guys take a look on here we've got ken has dropped all these things out here uh let's take a look at what's there and uh, there's some good ones uh, it's, it's jan on our chat it's it on is, our chat it's yes our, on our own chat so jan you take a look and pick one out pull one out and uh, give us a lovely voice um, ken ken dropped one you pick it up okay hmm. i got it i have one um draw me like one of your French ghouls. That was hard to get. Ghouls. Ghoul. And <laughs> consonants are hard. <laughs> Drink tequila first. Ghouls. <laughs> Man, that there had sort of that uh, Lucy at 80 sexy vibe on it, didn't it? <laughs> Inspector Gadget may return after these messages. Oh, catch you, Gadget, if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> there it is. There that it is. is awesome. Very nice. Throw something out to us at John St. John. Find something there. Oh, uh, let me see. I'm looking. <clears throat> um, what do we have here? What voice are you thinking of using? Uh, tell me what you want. Oh, how about we all sing a line from Laverne and Shirley theme song in the voice of one of our characters? Is that Do we have the lyrics for Laverne and Shirley? Yeah, no. No, I don't know. Shlemiel, Shlemazel, Kaz and Rev Incorporated. Oh, that's all Incorporated. Oh, hang on. I'll drop the lyrics. I got it. Uh, all right. All right. Drop the lyrics. And, and then we'll all, we'll all do a line. I'll start. Um, and I'll do, um, I don't know. Um, uh, Admiral Klunka from uh, Guild Wars 2, which is actually just my bad Patrick Stewart in, uh, impression, which I've used in so many games over the years. <laughs> Yeah, remember when Patrick Stewart was, this is Captain John Luke Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. You hear him today, hello, this is Patrick Stewart. He's getting like like Gary Owens did, the old winded voice. Yeah. Remember? Because Gary Owens, uh, the Geo Show on KMPC. And then later, before he passed away, uh, Kia motor cars, and he had that windiness. Is that going to happen to all of us? Oh, God. Is that going to happen to me? Um, Am I it's happening to you now, one? John. It's I, happening uh, to you right now. I just dropped the lyrics. Okay, i uh, got to scroll back up. There's so many of them. One, two, here. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shlamil, Shlamazel, Hasenfeth Incorporated. Da 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 da. We're gonna do it. Give us any chance, we'll take it. Give us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Doing it, doing our, it way. our way. Uh, nothing's gonna turn us back now. Straight ahead and on to the track now. We're going to make our dreams come true. Doing, Doing it, our way. it our way. There is nothing we won't try. <laughs> Never heard the word impossible. <laughs> this time, there's no stopping us. We're, We're going to do, do it. it. On your mark, get set, and go now. Got a dream, and we just know now. We're going to make our dreams come true. And we'll do, and it. We'll do it our way. Yes, do it our way. Make Ellen, go. Come true. And Make do it our way. Yes, our way. Make all our dreams. <laughs> the two of you for together is like you. a fever dream. Da, 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 da. Happy Days theme would have been easier, I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, the, the listening to John and Ellen do that together was like a fever dream kind of situation, <laughs> you know? It was. In fact. I'm rolling back up to the top here. We've got uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Person Cat, can you guys see that up near the top? That was one of the first ones that came through. They wanted to bring out some of the Kung Pao quotes. Mr. Person Cat. Oh, I see Mr. Person Cat. Okay. Mr. Person Cat. Uh, uh, go ahead, Alan. Why don't you throw out the first one there, the uh, Kung Pao quote. Can you see that? Must be way I'm up bleeding. There. Make me the victor. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go Hermaeus Mora. The sunrise of night will be four bucks. You want fries with that? Maybe he just left with nuts. Oh, God. 
Uh, Someone jump in. Finish that last line for us. Tiger. Tiger, tiger, tiger. Bud. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Now, I don't know. Your level is a little low, John. I had to. I had hey, to do right. this to hear it's you. It's a whispery a kind of thing. There. Okay. It's a little oh, whispery yeah. kind of thing. That that last line there, Tiger, mm, Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. The birdie, birdie, birdie makes me. Th- I don't know. It's from Kung Pao, but it makes me think of uh, Peter Sellers with little birdie num nums there. You know. One above that here. Someone's asking. Here, a guy, uh, uh, Ubiya Kishiki from uh, Demon Slayer. Yes, sure right that, that would be Godzilla Bells 77. Yes, Hello, Godzilla Bells. <laughs> for, their, for their kids. Go, Matt. <laughs> the smart man can pick up a grain of sand and envision a whole universe. But the stupid man will find some seaweed and roll around until he's all covered in it and go, hey, I'm Vine Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Vine Man. Yeah. <laughs> I've got uh, Eleonora wanted either Shea Gorth or McGreedy. Maybe I can do this one. It's right above it, and then we'll have McGreedy do it. We'll get the we'll get a, a comparison line because it's fairly short, right? Okay, okay. All right, here we go. Desk fan. Who carries around a desk fan? Nice. <laughs> what? A desk fan? Really? Who carries around a desk fan in this place? Jeez. Very nice, very nice. And uh, we're gonna, a lot of Johns in here, you know, got all that, Nuka Cola, we got lots of that. You know what, it's time for us to do another script. What do you say, guys? Let's do another script, Wes. I would like, uh, there's one thing, John, you're doing uh, Duke Nukem, the voice of Duke Nukem. Uh, all right. If, has anybody ever read the original script for A Christmas Story? Can't say that I've ever read it. The first Christmas story script, I was reading it. And as it turns out, they kept the cursing in for the old man. Oh, the old man oh. actually really cursed. And when Darren McGavin did it in the movie, it's all. Then he does all these sounds and it's hysterical and it's wonderful. But in the original script, evidently, he was a little bit salty and maybe, I don't know, to drop the uh, rating down a little bit or make it a little more family friendly. They decided to. uh uh, have Darren McGavin just make noises instead. So we have a Christmas story. And I do want the old man, uh, which is father, uh, to be John St. John as dad. But we still have the mother. So who will be the mother in this one here? I vote for either Ellen or Jan. I want to be the narrator. You want to be the narrator? Okay, so Ellen is the narrator, and that is, of course, uh, Jean Shepard, the guy who actually did the original stories and narrated it in the movie as the original guy. Um, So you will be the narrator, the Jean... uh, uh, I I, I will go ahead and do the uh, stage directions on this one, and you be the narrator. Uh, Jan, would you like to be the mother? Yup. And that would mean uh, between John Lowry and Matt Mercer, we are going to need to have uh, Ralphie and uh, Randy. Uh, You have a fave there, Matt? Uh, You know what? I'll just go ahead and grab Randy. Okay. Okay. Are you feeling Randy today, Matt? Are you feeling Randy? (laughs) Always, friend, always. Yeah. <laughs> so Matt Mercer is Randy. Uh, we've got Ralphie is John Patrick Lowry. The narrator is Ellen McLean. Jan is mom. John St. John is the old man. And I will narrate. These are the voice of blues of players with that seminal classic, A Christmas Story. Interior, living room, Ralph, Randy, mother, father, night. It is after dinner. The family is trimming the tree on this most important of all nights, Christmas Eve. The tree, complete with a bare spot which did not fluff out, is standing in its little red tin holder, fragrantly, toweringly, teeteringly. Father stands on a ladder, also teetering, stringing lights to the top of the tree. All right, plug him in. Mother scrambles around, finds extension cord under the sofa, plugs in Christmas tree lights. Son of a bitch. What's, What's the matter? Uh, them green ones ain't lit, damn it. The green ones are lit. It's the blue ones, honey. Don't tell me, damn it. 
Father scrambles down the ladder, gets a new bulb, runs back up the ladder to the top. The tree screws in the new bulb. Okay, plug her in again. Mother plugs the string of lights into the extension. Our entire world was strung together with extensions. Outlets in our house were rare and coveted. The Christmas tree lights up. Ah. Uh. The Christmas tree goes out. <sighs> lights blink and dim. The kitchen light burns wildly for a moment, flickers, goes out. Damn it. Father runs down the ladder, grabs the extension, and unplugs the tree lights. Get the extension from the toaster. Ralph and Randy run to the kitchen. Occasionally, in some houses, a critical point was reached, and one of these electrical bombs went off, sometimes burning down whole blocks of homes, or more often blowing out the main fuse, plunging half the town into darkness. Ralph and Randy return, carrying the extension from the toaster. Okay, come on. Give it here. Let's go. Father plugs the extension into a rat's nest of electrical jank, rams the plug from the tree into the extension, and hurries up the ladder. Okay, plug it in. Mother plugs it in. The Christmas tree lights up. The house remains lit. Oh my, isn't that pretty? <laughs> Son of a bitch. The tree stands in all its splendid, fragrant beauty. Father comes down the ladder. The family stands in awed silence around the tree, drinking in its magnificent beauty. <sighs> okay, give me the star. Mother digs in the cardboard box. Father climbs the ladder. Be, be careful. Oh, for Christ's sake. I know what I'm doing. Father leans over from the ladder and places the star on the top of the tree. For a moment, all hangs suspended. The tree glows. Ralph and Randy admire. Mother nervously wrings her hands. Then slowly, majestically, the tree begins to tilt. Oh, be careful. Damn it, son of a bitch. Father grabs the top of the tree and shoves it back upright. The star is now noticeably cockeyed. Uh, okay. Nobody mentions the crooked star. Perfect. He runs down the ladder, rubs his hands, and admires the tree. Mother sighs and wipes her hands on her apron. Mother glances at the clock. Oh, goodness. Look at the time. I hope Santa Claus hasn't had to pass up this house because some boys went in bed when he came by. Uh yeah. yeah. I heard some sleigh bells a while back uh, heading up the other side of the street. I want to see Santa. I want to see Santa. <laughs> Randy dashes to the window. I was good all year, son, to but if he said bad words twice and I never said any. <laughs> oh, Randy, Santa doesn't like tattletales. Randy turns at the moment and of indecision flickers on his face. He turns back to the window. But Ralphie didn't mean nothing, Santa. <laughs> Squealer. All right, you two, that's it. Up the stairs. On the double. The boys dash up the stairs. Mother and the old man look at one another. Night, Ralphie's house, exterior. A night, snow falls. Camera appears from across the street. We see mother and the old man as they play Santa Claus. The old man opens up the front door and goes to the trunk of the olds. It's a calculated risk. Several of the bumpuses hounds stir. A howl sets up. The old man dashes for the door, slipping and sliding on the new snow. He makes the front door one step ahead of the furry mass. Ralphie stares forlornly from his bed. We see the light snow falling outside his window as the camera moves in on his face. Kids dream hard. Even though the official and final word had come down from Santa Claus himself, I found myself listening to some distant clamor of hope. After all, bears had been spotted down at Pulaski's candy store. And see. Good job, guys. Wes, I have an I announcement. <clears throat> yes, go ahead, Ken. Can't wait. Can we get a drum roll, everybody? We, we passed twenty-seven thousand. We're now at twenty-seven thousand five dollars raised for the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, big you thank you, rock. the anonymous legend who who donated three hundred and forty-six dollars exactly wow. to get us there. Uh, the anonymous five, legend. Another five dollar anonymous uh, anonymous donation. Uh, Jan John's annoying cousin for twenty dollars. 
annoying cousin of Jan Johns. That's uh, excellent. <laughs> Turtle for twenty dollars or annoying. skin uh, twenty dollars. You thank have you much three. Celeste. Shadow style. Thank you so much. Uh, Shadow style says thank you all for doing this. My grandmother had Alzheimer's, and I'm very happy to see all this going towards a great cause. It isn't too much to ask. I'd love to hear Matt and John have a conversation as. Kumat Saul and Big the Cat. Thank you all again. Well, I mean, if that's a request from somebody who made a donation, it must happen, right, guys? Have you found my Foggy? I can't find my Foggy, and he doesn't look very good. Well, I got to say, if you describe what your Foggy looks like, I'd be happy to help you find it. Oh, my God. Are we related? Because it kind of sounds like it right now, and it's freaking me out. Uh, uh, don't be too worried about it. You got yourself a nice, knowledgeable look in your eye, and uh, we can be friends. Come on, give, a, give me a hug. Give me a <laughs> A nice Christian side hug, because I can't get pregnant that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe we can't be friends. This got real awkward real fast. You know what? Have a good day. I'm going to go out the back. Bye. See you. <laughs> oh, my God. That was amazing. Scene. <laughs> so good. So good. By the way, uh, going back to a Christmas story, absolutely will in the chat said Pirate Randy and Demon Lord Ralphie is an A plus dynamic that I need more of immediately. <laughs> I think I think that would have definitely changed a Christmas story for the better, don't you guys? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. That's what I was thinking, yeah, yeah. So let's go back to our chat. Uh, Kenny, drop one for me. Oh, I dropped everything that I had, uh, unless we want to start pulling live from chat. Yeah, pull Ooh, live from live. chat. We got some live do, from chat. The question is, isn't that the most daring? Do we want, uh, so we've had uh, donations coming in. Do you want to do maybe a donation for a prompt? Absolutely. If somebody wants us to say something and uh, they want to do a donation for it, I think that's a nice way to go. Anybody or just a minimum, like maybe $10? Uh, yeah, $10. If you can throw in $10, we'll say what you want us to say. If you we do it for $20, voices. I'll say nasty stuff. I'll say <laughs> words that you don't run, necessarily want to hear coming out of our mouths. I right. will all say something nasty for an extra 20 bucks, right? And if, and so, if you do $21, no. I'll say nasty stuff about John St. John. <laughs> oh, that's, that's $50, though. That's 50 <laughs> We have a sliding scale, but yes, we will do these things. Absolutely. Well, uh, while people are, are, are getting ready to, to donate, for prompts uh i did also want to mention um noble chairs has sponsored this stream um i am sitting in one yeah. right now uh noble chairs hit exclamation point noble chairs we have a number of giveaways that actually end in an hour so those uh, chairs are amazing that we're do they have good away. lower lumbar support that's what i want to know absolutely they do yeah, well, yeah put me down for one well ken uh, ken how is your bottom feeling right now you're sitting in one so how does it make you feel perky Perky. <laughs> not not concerned that Wes wants to know how your bottom feels? <laughs> well, the, 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 it, it doesn't have a, a quarter that you put in in five Nobody at all is going like to that. clip that. <laughs> oh, the magic fingers that really work. I love those. Yeah, Are though, we this, saying nasty the, things about Kenneth now? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. The, <laughs> the one chair, which is the uh, Skyrim 10th anniversary chair, actually it's this black leather chair and it has an arrow on the side pointing directly to your knee. So <laughs> if you were once an adventurer, it lets you know while you're sitting why you can adventure no longer. Uh, Does it have that little thing right in the middle of the seat that can give you a Skyrim job while you're sitting there? <laughs> that's an that's an ad that's an add on, John. That's an add on. Where exactly is that arrow going? <laughs> I bet that's expensive. Yeah, those you guys are... expected me to do this. Don't act surprised. <laughs> He's doing it. Okay, here we Skyrim, go. Please. All right, we got uh, totally not Shia uh, for ten dollars. Uh, someone saying Turtle Mayor of Watoga may be the coolest person ever. Oh, that's a good line. Who's going to bring that one up? Turtle Mare of Watoga is the coolest thing ever. Is that what it is? Yep. Jen Johns. Jen Johns. Do it oh, wacky. Jen. Jen Johns read. Okay. 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 Make it wacky. Okay. Really wacky. Okay. Turtle. Say it again, Ken. <laughs> Do it for me. Turtle Mayor of Watoga may be the coolest person ever. Turtle Mayor of Watoga may be the coolest person ever. Okay. Listen Damn, Lurleen, get me a beer and get over her. <laughs> Listen here, you're not going to get biblical with me right now. Damn it, woman. Is that the turtle mayor? You say he's a turtle mayor of Watoga? He didn't. Well, he did not get circumcised, sir. It was a choice. <laughs> I think that character's name is Lurleen. You sound Lurleen. like a Lurleen to me. 
Yeah, Lurling's up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> Lurling, Lur Lurling's up to three and a half packs a day, I think. <laughs> yeah. You want you want to you want Lurleen to say something nasty about your friends? You just buy her a little scotch and go sit in the corner for her for a while, and she'll say anything you want. Anything. <laughs> Just like us. We'll see anything. It sounds like us at convention appearances. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> buy us a couple of shots and we'll say anything you want, man. <laughs> Better make Abs sure your, your phone's charged. <laughs> Absolutely. Will just said, hang on. That's my accent you're using, Jan. So somebody <laughs> feels seen out there. Oh, we got uh, another donation coming in from Scarlett. Uh, hey, Matthew Mercer, can you talk about Essex Felis? Is is oh. doing as Essex the Thelus? Thelus? Uh, Essex Thelus is uh, particularly a character from Critical Role. Um, I, he's doing good, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's de definitely sort of in uh, a light Eastern European voice. He's, uh, there's a darkness to him, and he has done many terrible things. And uh, in, uh, in the time that has had commenced since the campaign completed, he has um, spent some time conjecturing over the things he's done and hopes to make amends while also possibly taking up knitting. <laughs> I, I love how you just go, he's done many terrible things over time. Pepe the Spastic. It's nothing. Pepe the Spastic Frog has requested his mat to turn up his microphone. <laughs> oh, they, they, they felt it was rather whispery there, Matt. Yeah. Who oh, was it? My apologies. Is this better? Oh, that's perfect. That's oh, perfect. you're so yeah. crystal clear. I there, feel like there, you're yeah. sitting in my ear. <laughs> Delightful. This is now an ASMR broadcast. <laughs> now, how many of you out there feel like you could be Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz? You ever feel lost, feel like you're in a world that's not your own making? Every day. Every day? Every day. Who, amongst us here, who would uh, the crowd out there love to see as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz? Uh, it, basically, it would be a voice thing. You, we're not necessarily going to dress up in the uh, the, the lovely uh, plaid dress. And the oh, apron. well, then I'm out. I wanted yeah. the dress. Yeah. Damn it! So forget <laughs> it. I'm I'm right out of there. Somebody just said Fox, <laughs> the super mutant. <laughs> now, someone else wants uh, John St. John to be Dorothy. Now, that's two for Dorothy as Duke Nukem. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, Fox, Fox had an early running there, but then the late votes that were, of course, casted early and are now just coming in have taken over. So um, let's just look. <laughs> Jessica Starr, John would look great in Gingham. <laughs> I mean, there's no arguing that, right, guys? I'd take it, money. <laughs> That's what we need to get you wearing, John, when we do the King Con cruise next year. Heading gingham. down on the boat. Yeah, gingham. A nice gingham dress. Something sunny and, and breathable, really. Because yes. it's going to be warm in the Bahamas, you know? It something has to look good when I dance, dog. though. And I dance well, stupid, so. How many people out there would love to see John St. John in a lovely sundress with the wind blowing Marilyn Monroe style up him? Uh, oh, that would, yes. I think. I, I, yeah. I know what you're saying. You're, really, you yeah. mean a moo-moo. You want to see me in a moo-moo, don't you? Well, I can That's you what I call Hawaiian moo? shirts, by the way. They're man moo-moos. No offense, <laughs> Mr. Lowry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. No, I, I don't think I've ever seen you in anything else but a moo moo. So. <laughs> you know, you yeah. see me as a moo moo. That's right. That's 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 right. That's right. Oh, I'm a moo moo now. <laughs> Hello, this is moo moo. Well, uh, who would be the scarecrow? John Patrick Lowry. Okay, John Patrick Lowry. Right. Yeah. All right. And and what voice would you use as the scarecrow, John? Sniper. Uh, no, I think uh, I think uh, Sean Connery. Oh. On Connery is Scarecrow. Very nice. Now, how about how about the Tin Man? Oz never did shit for him, so who feels like Oz didn't do shit for you here? Anybody? <laughs> Matt? You jump in for the Tin Man, yeah. I don't think I've got anything out of Oz myself. Who would you be the Tin Man as? Let's do the Tin Man as... Uh, yeah, let's do Cassidy from Overwatch. Why not? All right, Cassidy from Overwatch as the Tin Man. So we're going to need then the Lion. So, uh, Ellen, there, there's, there's Scurry and Squeak, who are the other characters in here, Scurry and Squeak. So they would have to be the same person. So uh, oh. we have uh, basically the Lion and we have Scurry and Squeak. Ellen, what do you think? Well, I'll take the Lion as GLaDOS. 
the lion as GLaDOS. Okay, you're going to have to be really, uh, you know, because this is this is your big scene. This is the lion's oh. big scene. Oh, and I I'll didn't do- realize that. Oh, and Ellen's going to make a big scene no matter what. John told me that. That's right. And uh, uh, Scurry and Squeak are evidently a couple of small mouses. Uh, so I will mouses? play both of those. Really? Mouses? Mises, Mises Mices, Mooses. Uh, <laughs> And I will play them. Have another as beer, Wes. Fox. <laughs> I will. I will play them as Fox. And so let us let us bring out. This is scene five from the Wizard of Oz. It's called <clears throat> Meet the Lion with the voice of Palooza players. I don't like this forest. It's dark and creepy. You're supposed to meet any wild animals. <laughs> Oh, we may. Animals that eat straw? Some, but mostly lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> lions. Tigers. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. <laughs> we are horrible chanters. Suddenly, lion appears, growling. Scarecrow trembles. Tin Man trembles. Dorothy wets herself and looks around. Oh. Put him up. Put up your dukes. I'll fight you both if you want. I'll fight you with one paw tied behind my back. I'll fight you standing on one foot. Hey, go away and leave us alone. <laughs> Oh, you're scared, huh? Come on and fight, you shivering junkyard. Put your hands up, you lopsided bag of hay. What about you, Pee-wee? I'll get you too. Shame on you. (laughs) What'd you do that for? I didn't bite him. No. But you tried to. It's bad enough you picking on a straw man, but when you go picking on poor little doggies. Well, you didn't have to go and hit me, did you? Is my nose bleeding? Of course not. My goodness, what a fuss you're making. Uh, Picking on things weaker than you are. Why, you're nothing but a great big coward. You're right. I am a coward. Oh. Oh, oh, I haven't any courage at all. I haven't slept in weeks. Uh, Why don't you try counting sheep? (laughs) Uh, He can't count sheep. He's uh, afraid of them. (laughs) Jen, you do squeak. Oh, Lord. Um. Yeah, he's even afraid of us. Sing the song. If I only had the nerve. <laughs> I would dance around the garden and I'd show them all my boner if I only. Oh, wait, that's. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, song sounds different. <laughs> Do you think the wizard could help him, too? Uh, I don't see why not. We're on our way to see the Wizard of Oz now to get him a heart. And him a brain. (laughs) And I'm sure he could give you some courage. Oh, to be brave. Roar. (laughs) Uh, uh, Oh, him! Shouldn't he be louder? Come on now. A little louder. Oh, to be king of the forest. Roar. (laughs) King of the scaredy cats is more like it. (laughs) 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 Come on now. Wait a minute. Yeah, come on now. Give it all you got. Show me king of the forest. I'll show him king of the forest. (laughs) Oh, to be the bravest lion of all. Roar. (laughs) 
Yes, uh, let's, uh, let's go get you some courage. And me a brain. Me a heart. <laughs> and me back home. The end. Yeah. Super accurate for the original. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was priceless. Oh, man. I love Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was. that was a damn good Sean Connery. It yeah. was. It was. Excellent. Hey, and, and during during this reading as Sean Connery, what, and you'll think back two days to the last thing we did, what were you doing just now? You were just what ing here? I was just shitting here. Passing. He was, he was just shitting here. Just <laughs> shitting. Oh, just shitting here. Thank you for shitting here. We appreciate it, Sean. It's a one pleasure. way. DJs say that all the time so they can get away with it on the air. I certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, let's. Uh, where are we at now, Ken? How are things going? We got any suggestions yep. from yeah, folks? Yeah, we've, we've got quite a few. So $10 minimum donation if you want to do uh, a prompt here. Uh, we got Mazoga the Dork. I would love to hear a conversation between Fox and a now grown-up McCready. Ooh. Ah, okay. Uh, I you used to you used to be small. Yeah, I guess you were kind of small at one point too, but you also didn't smell quite this bad either. Uh, I like to smell this way. Me and me know I coming. <laughs> That's true. Hey, I am respecting your life choices. If anything, I could probably use a little more of a tip to blend in with the surroundings. You, mm, you smell like human. Oh, thank you. That's the uh, Pantene Pro V. Kind of hard to find and scavenge for out here in the wilds. I don't know why people don't uh, attack us when you are around. I think I'm too annoying to be worth shooting at, but you know, it's a tactic. Uh, uh, you weapon of choice? Probably a mute fruit. <laughs> You'd be surprised the places you can hide them. <laughs> mute fruit? Left coming Gatling variety? I think we can figure something out, big man. Come on, let's try it out. I look forward to your mood fruit gun. <laughs> <laughs> we also, nice. we, we just had uh, one more come in from uh, Nene Chan for Matt, and it was a, a, a little bit of a long one, so I thought it would be easier just to send it to you here in Zoom. Ah, oh, I see it here. Okay. Oh, as, as Die for You from Blackout Club. Oh, this is a cool reference here. Okay. I got shot trying to stop poachers. Almost died in the ambulance, I guess. Blood in my mouth, delirious, trying to say no one cares. The EMT gave me this weird, sweet smile and said, they will now. Yay. Nice. Yay. <laughs> right, we've got a lot of well, guys, uh, do we have any more there, Ken? Yeah, we've we've got a sixty dollar donation from George Wolf for the whole cast to take turns singing "I Want It That Way" by the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> uh, do do you have some of the lyrics? Oh, do you have Lord. a track? Yeah. <laughs> Not Yo, that I could weird. play. Do we have to dance in sync? I mean, there are questions. Uh, here. I don't. I know. guess. I, I guess you can't people. dance in sync and be Backstreet Boys at the same time. Let's. Yeah, we can at I least do. I don't know I've, anything written after eighteen fifty. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> I've heard of Backstreets and I've heard of boys. We know you've heard of boys. <laughs> we you could always uh. Wait Follow my lead. To say nasty things about you. Yeah, do it. Here it is. Let's see, let's start with a, a, a character in particular here. Uh, I'll do it a strong bad because that's fun. There we go. There we go. All right, it. so let's do this. Um, you are <laughs> my fire, the one desire. Believe when I say, and I do say it. I want it that way. <laughs> you nice, are nice. My fire, the one desire. <laughs> Believe what I say. I want it 
that way. <laughs> but we are two worlds apart. Can't reach into your heart when you say that I want it that way. <laughs> you are my fire. <laughs> The one desire, Froggy. Believe me when I say I want it that way. <laughs> uh, tell me why ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why I never want to hear you say I want it that way. I'd love to hear an old Jewish couple doing this one as you do, uh, as you do it. That would be just charming. It, it gives me a quell, Jan. I've got, a, I've got some knockers here and a quell. Do it again. Do it again. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why. I never want to hear you say, I want, I want it my that way. I love you so oh, much. That was, oh, that was wonderful. I love you more than Kogel. You are my fire. The <laughs> one desire. The castle. Believe me when I say I want it that way. But yeah, tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why. I never want to hear you say I want it that way. With some hefty hickory, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think Wes has some anger issues that he might need to work out <laughs> after the broadcast today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. Uh thank you very much Michael for that $100 donation. Uh Yeah. Did we did we asking, work off the 100 bucks? Did we pay our debt to Alzheimer's right uh, there? Never pay your debt to anything. <laughs> yeah. Michael uh Michael did ask for that $100. Can't get enough of Sheo Gorath. Please just a little bit. Oh, just a wee bit of Sheo Gorath. That's all you're looking for. Well, let me tell you something. A wee bit is not never enough. Oh, it's not. What you want is a lot of Shia Gorath. What I want is a lot of you. I'll skip rope with your entrails. And perhaps we'll make a little brain pie. Ew. Care to donate? Mmm, brain pie. Mm. Living that Daedric drip. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that was my favorite yeah. sandwich. Taco Cat asking, could Matt send a message jester style, but with Silas's voice? The head math I'm doing here moments. <laughs> dial it in. Dial it in. All right, all right. Can't. Hello, Delilah, my darling. Um, I'm a bit caught up trying to find the right feed for my dinner. But if you wait, I promise. Worth it. <laughs> you were counting your words. I saw you counting. You were word counting. That's cheating. <laughs> well, the, the, sending, the, the, the descending spell in Dungeons and Dragons only uh, allows for 25 words at a maximum, so it's important to count when you're before you send uh, it. Kind of like the Twitter of that, of that word. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Far less dangerous socially. <laughs> this is another real quick one for Matt. It's, can he say it's absolute fucking chaos as Artie? Oh, is our dragon? <laughs> oh, you mighty fools. You think that there's some sort of a reason or a, a subtle plan. Fate, destiny. Oh, no, you're all wrong. Everything is absolute fucking chaos. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh... Woody Weevil at Boofus Having Trouble, thank you for finally uh, finding your way through PayPal. Thank you so much for doing these dreams. My grandpa died from Alzheimer's when I was 11. Mm. Thank you for doing these and bringing some positivity to our days. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for bringing and, and holding the memory of uh, your grandfather there because we become we become the caretakers of uh, the memory of oh. those. Oh, Woody we, forgot do we, to... Do, do, we, do we know the name of his grandfather? We could each in a character voice say his grandfather's name. Yep. Woody... In, in uh, a character voice. Woody, drop it in chat here. Woody forgot Maybe to... Maybe he will. Woody, we need that it. grandfather name. We'll all pay tribute to the grandfather who 
passed from Alzheimer's. I uh, my favorite grandfather, the one I was closest to, passed from Alzheimer's uh, back in the early '90s, and <clears throat> I was pretty close to him. Uh, it was sad to see him lose memory of who I was at one mm. point. Um, that really hits home as uh, it, it just makes Alzheimer's just the worst disease I can. It's the cruelest disease it is. of all. It is. In my I mean, opinion. it could, it, it takes who you are, everything you ever were, everything you will be. It takes that away from you. And um, physically you can hang out for a number of years. You could still be there for a number <laughs> of years, but the personalities change, the memory fails. Uh, yeah. There's so many things that make it difficult to be a caretaker, to be around, to love somebody who has Alzheimer's. And eventually, blessedly, they don't necessarily know what's happening to them but in the early stages as it's slipping away they desperately do and uh and that's what i mean we're having a great deal of fun here today but that's what we're doing we're raising money for the alzheimer's association because they help folks they help folks they put them on the right path i mean wouldn't it have been great john if you knew that you had a resource that you could somebody you could talk to when that was happening that could make things a little bit easier and absolutely and back yeah, then yeah. Yeah, back then in the uh, mid, uh, early to mid '90s, uh, when he passed, that was uh, there. There was just not much known. We've come a long way, that's for sure. But there, there was no real counseling that I was able to seek. Uh, cl- fortunately, I have good family. Yeah, you know, my mom and my brother and sister and I all bonded and and you know and and talked it out. But it, but it really is heart wrenching uh, to to lose someone to Alzheimer's like well, that. Well, it becomes kind they, of a they thing lose with you family. in the process. Yeah, they do lose you. It's like the oh, the whole family feels it. It devastates entire families. It becomes something that's almost like a, a dirty secret. You don't tell what's going on inside of your house, but it shouldn't be. It should be something mm-hmm. that's out there. That's known that, that, uh, that you can talk about and help now Alzheimer's association. <laughs> and if you ever need anybody, you could go to ALZ.org to look up information. If you're anywhere else around the world, you could go to ALZ.org slash global and find uh, help and guidance. But that's what we're doing here today as well as we're getting the information out. John, when in the 90s, uh, Alzheimer's Association was around, but we didn't necessarily know how to reach out to them. We didn't, I didn't have, know what Google yeah. was in 1992. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, I mean, org. Woody's uh, grandfather's name is Charles. You know what? That Charles had balls of steel. I'd go anywhere for that guy. He was a number one, baby. Hail to Charles the King, baby. There you go. Shea Gorath. Oh, let me tell you something about Charles. A madman in his day. And I'm one to talk. You know, he could be over on either side. A mania, dementia, but it's dementia that finally got him. But he's a strong man. A wonderful man. Oh, the kind of guy that Haskell just wishes he could be. Don't you, Haskell? Ah, shut up. You know it's true. You're no Charles. The administrator. Victory, Charles. Oh, Charlie, you mad wanker. Keep your head down, mate. And I mean that. You're a good shooter. I would gladly have Charles aboard my ship any time. A warrior. Wonderful man. Good heart. Excellent chef. <laughs> Say, you choose your friends and your companions in the battlefield the proper way. If I had a choice to choose someone at my back, Charles, I think, would be the kind of person I could put my trust in. So let us take a moment and remember what it means to be a good heart and a good warrior. Thank you, Charlie. You know, Wes. Hey, Charles, have you seen my froggy? Sorry, I had to. Wes, um, absolutely will sit here and chat. Caretaker burnout is a real thing that doesn't get talked about Mm -hmm. enough. If you find yourself taking care of a loved one or a long term situation, please, please listen to these folks and reach out. Let others help you yourself as you take care of your loved one. I, uh, and we've talked about this, Wes. When we tried to keep my grandmother out of a place like that, we tried twice um, and we just couldn't. Um, Sometimes And being honest with yourself about that is so brutal. And then even afterward, you feel there's no more guilty feeling in the universe until you're dropping them at a... See, I wasn't gonna do it. You drop them at the doorstep and you have to drive away. You do not feel like any more of a failure to someone you love in your life than that moment. 
and you have to be able to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be able wow. to understand that you're doing the best thing you possibly can for them. Sometimes uh, a facility with memory care uh, intact at the place, and you can find play the good facilities with memory care available at ALZ.org. But finding something like that is the best thing you can do. And yet we're we're programmed to think that we have to be the ones to take care of everything. And you just can't. When we finally had to find a place uh, for my mother, um, when her dementia got to the point where she could no longer be trusted or safe at home alone, um, and you take them out of their home and out of their environment that they've worked their entire lives to get to, and they can feel it slipping away and they know they're losing this independence. We've all strived since we were children to get to a point where we take care of ourselves and we are independent. And to feel that without anything you've done wrong, nothing you've done wrong, but to see it slipping away, it's hard to give that up. And it's hard for us to do that to those we love, but we're not doing that. Well, I, I have to say, yes, Wes, I have a sister in a facility right now. I have eight sisters and she is my oldest sister and she has dementia and her children made the decision and it was the best for everyone. Mm -hmm. And even now, when my sister speaks to me in moments of clarity, she says, I'm very happy here. Mm -hmm. And this is the right place for me to be. I'm getting much better care. So there should be no feelings of guilt. We, we take care of our family members in the best way that we can. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not caregivers ourselves. Leave that to the professionals is mm. kind of the rule of thumb here there yeah. are people yeah. trained to to care for our loved ones that we can't physically care for while we're trying to care for our own family it, it, yeah. it's a yeah. tough position to be in but it's good to know uh, alzheimer's association has resources for those who are suffering through alzheimer's so yeah. and people who have dealt with it before themselves and understand where you are and where you're coming from yeah. um yeah this 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 whole thing is is I mean, I've used the word devastating a lot, but it is. It, it, it's very hard. We were talking the other day about how with Alzheimer's and with uh, dementia and things of that sort, how music tends to work in a different way. They remember and retain things much better musically. Uh, and we were talking about uh, Glenn Campbell, who was able to perform towards the very end of Alzheimer's, even when he was forgetting folks. And if you want to hear a song that will rip oh, you man. apart, listen to I the know, final song that he song? ever did. Jesus. I won't be missing you that uh, is, is just it is it, it'll break your heart and uh, it, it's a tearjerker have, have some, a box of Kleenexes ready if you haven't heard that song before yeah and Tony Bennett who was was out performing recently uh on stage uh I think it was uh Madison Square Garden or Carnegie Hall one or the other I can't remember but Lady Gaga was there and he gets up there every day they get him in front of a piano and he knows every song he may be forgetting who you are what's going on and not be in touch with things running but he knows every song and it's deeply ingrained into who he is and he went up on stage and was performing and there's a moment if you watch that uh concert when lady gaga comes out because tony's doing his bit and she comes out and he turns and goes lady gaga and points at her and say you can see it in her eyes she she nearly breaks down and cries right there because he moment of clarity right her. there huh he hadn't recognized her for three weeks before that moment when they were working together and doing this but the moment he's on stage in his element in his uh, suit and tie with the piano behind him and a microphone in his hand everything clicked into place and he was there and we don't know when we're going to get those wonderful moments of clarity when they suddenly do remember for a short period of time and then it disappears and sometimes it's it's just a painful kick in the heart to almost the tease to have Can I someone ask? that you love be there for just a split second but i i remember some of those things very very well and they were important as as actors i wonder because th this i had an experience with my grandmother um sometimes i think having improv training is such a gift because hmm. she had uh dementia um i don't know if she was ever fully diagnosed with, with alzheimer's but she was in a memory care unit um, and I remember there was a lot of combative, you know, no, that's not this way. And then I was like, no, right. let's yes and through it. Like, so, and we had some joyful moments in the, even in the middle of the devastation, you know, of watching your loved one fade. 
But like, did anybody else have any experience like that with any of their family members? Like, because that is kind of a gift we get to have is learning how to roll with things, you know? Yeah. I think right. you are yeah, right, not... Jan. It is yes and. Because uh, when my stepfather was passing, he was very far gone and, and couldn't remember people. And you just dealt with that and love, love them. And, and, you know, find out what they want to talk about. My stepfather had, as a child, had been given flying lessons. And he was so excited and he could still talk about the flying lessons that he did when he was a teenager. And this is when he was in his 80s. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the challenge is for, for people, and I think we're just starting to learn this, is that, you know, if they can't be in our world anymore, we can find a way to be in theirs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can find yeah. a way to be in conversation with them. We just can't expect them to be able to be in conversation with us. You know, my yeah. mother till the end was uh, the most amazing storyteller. It wasn't all true. <laughs> the, a lot of it didn't happen, but my God, she could spin a yarn. And uh, I do remember one of the last lunches we had going there with my wife and we're sitting talking how she was in a car with my brother and they traveled to Chicago where Oprah made her queen for a day. And she sat down and talked to Gail and said, let me tell you something, Gail, he's got to do this thing about Stedman. And then my brother cried in the car because, well, we were going to kill you on the way here tonight, mom, but we decided to change our mind. We're taking you to see Oprah instead. And she tells all this with great conviction, 100%. It's all there. And my wife keeps looking at me like, really? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's that moment like in Animal House where it's like the Germans. No, he, he's on a roll. Let him go. Let him go. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually worked uh, when I was a teenager. I was an orderly in a, in a, uh, you know, you go in, you don't come out. The only way you go out is in a, is, you know, in a box. And, and uh, uh, several of the people there were, you know, gone. And uh, all the nurses loved me because I, I would just be there with them. You know, I would never say, no, you're, you're not there. It's not back then. It's now. I just, mm -hmm. you know, kind of be with there with them and kind of yeah. walk them around back to their room and, and stuff like that. Because, uh, uh, but, 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 you know, not everybody is equipped to do that. You know, when yeah, you just be in their world. They can't be in yours. So, right, right, yeah. right. But, but you remember who they are. You are the keeper of who they are and their right. memories, but you can't expect them to be at that point. So you hold right. on to who they were. But it is, it is one way that you can still love them. You know, yeah. right. even, yeah. even if they don't know you, you can be a pal. You know, you can be somebody who's there for them, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's, but that's, that's stuff we're, we're just starting to learn now. You know, this is, and you know, the, 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 the difficulty of putting people in homes, of course, it's all, it's all about history. You know, it used to be that you had the weird grandparent just living in your home with you and maybe they'd burn down the house or maybe they'd hurt themselves. If you were lucky, like it was your grandparent, not some stranger. Right, right. Yeah. And, and of course, homes were, were nightmares, you know, and, and, and the care facilities have gotten so much better. Um, yeah. And, and you do, however, need to be careful because not every facility is a memory care facility. Right. There are right. certain ones that are rated for memory care and that they are they specialize in folks who have Alzheimer's or who have dementia. And uh, some places, I hate to say it, are just about housing humans. And right. Uh, right. you need to be careful. That's why going out to ALC.org and talking to them and saying, give me a list of your most preferred and accredited uh, memory care facilities in the area if you need to go that way. You can also find people who will come to your home uh, a couple of times a week who will come out and, and, and help you and help set things up. Uh, if you're not ready for your, your parents or your loved one or your father or your, your partner to, to leave the home, there, there are ways to have someone come to your home and take care of you. And, uh, you know, we've, we were lucky enough that we ran into a number of those folks, as well as once we got into the facility, uh, people who could who could help my mother. Again, she was a storyteller. And, and if you put her in a situation with a whole bunch of people, new people that she can talk bad about, she was happy. You know, <laughs> what was that old thing in Steel Magnolias? If you don't have something nice to say, you come over and sit next to me. Hey. Well, you know, uh, she loved a uh, little gossip. She loved little talking and she didn't, it didn't really matter who it was for her. There were more people around her in those situations. 
There are more activities in a memory care facility for her than for us where we have our daily jobs. You have to take care of work and get rent and go shopping and, and take care of your family and do things. There are responsibilities that you have in your everyday life to add caretaker of someone with Alzheimer's or dementia on top of that can be super hard, super hard. So there's no shame in A, finding help, uh, B, accepting help, and, and, and C, allowing yourself to let go somewhat. There's no shame and there shouldn't be shame at all, even though we are maybe, maybe we're programmed for that. Should we lighten things up, Wes? <laughs> Please, please. Thank you. Do you want to uh, hop into another script? Or uh, we've also had some more donations for reads. Let's do some donations for reads, and then we'll finish up with our fast times at Ridgemont High. Sweet. Before before we do have some music, some songs, but we've been taking care of some of that. We are going to create a video game from scratch, that is utilizing your suggestions. And I'm getting my pen and paper out right now so that I can start writing things down and be ready for that when that happens. So oh, is this, is this analog ancient, ancient slang? I think you missed an opportunity there. We're going to be making a video game from scratch. Your scratch. Does anybody uh, else remember scratch? I remember scratch. Mm -hmm. I listen to way too much old time radio. <laughs> it's also old scratch, which is a different character altogether. We got a request uh, for Wes. We would love to hear Shale Gorath. Uh, as Wes and Artigan, or Ar yeah, Artigan is uh, Matt having a conversation about their favorite prank. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, tell me, what is your favorite prank? Because I know for me, it's raining dogs upon a village. I think it's lovely. And sometimes it could be St. Bernard's. Large dogs or small dogs, depending <laughs> upon how I feel at the time. Yeah, that that's wondrously delightful and very adorable as far as pranks go. I'd say in the thousands of years I've wandered the fair realms and beyond, I once managed to convince a small troop of individuals to worship a whale carcass that had washed up on shore. I believe the religion is still quite permeable and has been spreading all across the western side of the seaboard. Um, but you know, oh. don't, don't quote me on that. Oh. <laughs> Oh, perhaps I will, perhaps I won't. But you're ingenious. The whale carcass. And how long did they worship it before it began to desiccate? Oh, you see, that was part of the worship. The more it began to sting, the more that was part of the uh, presentational <laughs> prayer hour. Ah, it's basically the same thing as incense, only stinkier, far stinkier. Ah, I see you have quite the look for a good prank. Perhaps we should put together a prank YouTube channel together. Hmm, I think perhaps the next time I'm raining things, it might be desiccated whale carcasses. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so gross. laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> We're taking your now your calls here at 1-800-VOICE-BALOOZA. 1-800-VOICE-BALOOZA. We're doing voices for donations. Uh, next caller. No other caller. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, sorry, oh, I, do? I was I was reading a long one here. A long one. Someone send us another novel. Uh, yeah, let me just copy and paste it. That'll be way easier here. The mini series. Put it into the, the chat. I am putting it into the chat. We uh, have the technology that is available to us. Turland, who, you didn't say who this was for. Oh, make it for... Make it for everybody, don't you know? We can all do it. That's true. You can uh, pass it. And now we're all, this is this is great okay, entertainment. Everybody's staring at the <laughs> chat room, waiting for things to appear. There it is. Who wants to take this one? I'll take a little bit of it, and then someone else pick it up, all right? Ah, sounds good. <clears throat> Once I realized you were real, and telling the truth, I didn't know what to think, honestly. You are kind and sensitive, scared out of your mind. And I was the one who had to introduce you to the brutal reality of this place. I had to watch you fall apart and pull yourself back together and keep going. And when you insisted on wrapping my leg that first trip out, I think I fell in love with you just a little bit right then and there. You really cared. 
You wanted to help me, Pinky, me, the bitter mercenary, and the obnoxious punk making things harder for you. You actually worried about me. No one's ever really cared that much about me before. It, it scared me a little. You listened to me, asked for my advice, and from the start treated me more like a partner than an expendable hired gun. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Hey. Matthew Mercer, you sounded like Peter Laurie. <laughs> Peter uh, Laurie. Oh, yes, it's important that's to have a, Peter Laurie. That sounded like Peter Laurie. It was the brain, right? Yes. Pinky the brain. Pinky that the brain. was perfect. Yeah. It's the same thing we do every night. All right, guys, let's whip out our script. Everybody, North. whip North. it out. We are moving on to Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Uh, let's see here. I think that, uh, let's go with, uh, John St. John is the narrator on this one. All right. And, uh, Brad, uh, actually, you know what, uh, Jan, you haven't done a whole lot on the last couple. You ended up being a squeak. So we'll give you the big one, Brad. Oh gosh. Okay. And, uh, let's go. Arnold is going to be, uh, uh, is going to be Ellen. And uh, we need to have Dennis Taylor uh, is the uh, uh, manager. I'll take Dennis. And let's have the businessman be, uh, actually, Dennis, uh, why don't we have Dennis be uh, Matt? All righty. And we'll make the businessman be John Patrick Lowry. Sound good, guys? Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, here is another fine performance, not the way it was done initially in the movie, but the way it always should have been done. This is Fast Times at Ridgemont High by the Voice of Palooza players. Interior, Carl's Jr. Bathroom, morning. Inside the bathroom, Brad Hamilton applies the Carl's scrub brush to a felt tip graffiti message near the mirror. I eat big hairy pussy. He pauses and catches himself in the mirror. He adjusts his hair. Uh, Lisa, I have something to tell you. Look, I'm a senior now. I'm single, successful guy, and I've got to be fair to myself. Lisa, I, I, I think I need my freedom. <laughs> Brad pauses, looks at the mirror soulfully. Oh, don't do that. Don't take it personally, okay, please? Uh, I knew you'd understand, because... The bathroom door opens. It's Arnold, the boy who Brad got a job. you're on your break but would you cover me on register three brad nods exits interior carl's junior counter brad stands at the register we see a prominent display over brad's head try our 100 percent guaranteed breakfast the last of many harried businessman customers gets his breakfast order and takes his seat brad is joined by dennis taylor the assistant manager Come on, clean that counter off, Brad. Let's go play ball. Okay, Dennis. <laughs> Brad begins polishing the counter, and Dennis Taylor returns to his office at the back of the kitchen. Brad watches him disappear behind the door that says, Assistant Manager. As soon as Dennis disappears behind the door, the one businessman in the place rises and returns to the counter. Uh, may, may I help you? <laughs> The businessman has short, curly brown hair. He speaks in a whine. <laughs> yes, this is not the best breakfast I ever ate. The businessman points to the huge display over Brad's head. Try our 100% guaranteed breakfast. And I want my money back. Brad begins searching under oh. the counter. Oh, well, I, I believe you have to fill out a form. Uh, there's a pad right around here somewhere. Mm. No, I, I want my money back right now. Well, I'm sorry. That's not how it works, really. You, you ate most of your food already, too. So See that sign? <laughs> it says 100% money back guarantee. Do you know the meaning of the word guarantee? Guarantee from the Greek garant? What? Do they teach you that here? Uh, Give me my money. Brad begins looking to the restroom. Where's Arnold? I, I can't do that, sir, but, but if you wait just a minute, I can Look, find... Just put your little hand back in the cash register and give me my 275 back, okay? Please, Brad. Uh, 
I'm sorry, sir. Just let me find the forms here. And I'm so tired. I'm so tired of dealing with morons. Oh. How hard is it to... Brad looks up from under the counter. No amount of pay will make him take that kind of insult. Uh, um, mister, if you don't shut up, I'm going to kick 100% of your ass. Manager. Bam. The door to the assistant manager's office swings open and Dennis comes hurtling out of the back. Can I help you, sir? Is there a problem? I bet there's a problem. Your employer used profanity and threatened me with violence. I'm shocked. Frankly, I've eaten here many times and I've always enjoyed the service until today. Angle on bathroom door as it opens and Arnold starts toward the register. He quickly sees the incident with the irate businessman and ducks back inside the bathroom. All I wanted was my money back for this breakfast. It was a little undercooked, and this young man threatened me. Now, I plan to write a letter. I plan to... Dennis wheels around to Brad. Did you threaten this man? Or use profanity in any way? Yeah, he insulted me first. He called me a moron, so I did. Did you threaten this customer? Or use profanity in any way? Uh... Yeah, I did. <laughs> You're fired. Brad looks around, expecting his friends to defend him. <gasps> Dave and Rich seem very occupied with their work. Brad is stunned. I'm very sorry this happened to you, sir. Thank you very much. Then Brad unhooks his friar's apron and throws it on the counter. He grabs a backpack and walks out of the place. On the way, he bangs the bathroom door with his fist. I hope you had a hell of a piss, Arnold. <laughs> and the end. <laughs> it's been seen. What that is a hell of a piss? Oh. <laughs> well, that was just that was just beautiful. The I think the the uh, employee uh, boss manager relationship is one that we can all identify with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> why I became a voice actor relationships like those oh god so guys uh we are now at the portion i now would you guys like to do a song really quickly we can each do a song each one of us will pick a song and if you take a look at what we have we have uh all the songs from the rock and roll hall of fame inductees oh. so we've got uh, a duran duran hungry like the wolf <laughs> dolly parton's i will always love you lionel richie's hello uh, we've got Lose Yourself by Eminem, uh, Love is a Battlefield by Pat Benatar, Sweet Dreams Are Made of This by The Eurythmics, or excuse me, by Eurythmics, and You're So Vain by Carly Simon. Guys, pick a character and pick a song. Tell us what you're going to do. I want to do Sweet Dreams because I actually know that one. Okay, Sweet and what character, what character would you do that in, John? I think I will do that as Pudge. As Pudge, all right. Pudge from Dota 2. Yeah. <clears throat> I might go with Love is a Battlefield oh. in the voice of uh, Yusuke Kitagawa, Persona 5. Excellent. Ellen, John, Jan? Well, uh, the one song, You're So Vain. And now Carly I'm, Simon. But I'm trying to find the, uh, uh, the email. <clears throat> it up i shall do that to the email you're so vain there uh, we go i'll do it i'll go ahead go ahead jen hungry like a wolf hungry like a wolf hungry like the wolf what about you john um lionel richie hello did anybody pick that not yet that's a good okay yet. i'm hello so uh lionel richie hello and uh that would leave uh i will always oh. love you <laughs> I will always love you. Uh, probably, I think, with that one would definitely be Fox. That's definitely a Fox one. <laughs> so uh, who's going to go first? Who's going to give us their wonderful rendition first? All right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I don't mind. John's diving in <laughs> first. Go I'm an on, attention John. whore. Because I think this song in particular would be a I don't want to do Duke Nukem every freaking time I'm doing a thing. But right. I'm kind of forced to, but this song, <laughs> ugh, 
I've been alone with you inside my mind. And in my dreams, I've kissed your lips a thousand times. I sometimes see you pass outside my door. Hello, is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your smile. You're all I've ever wanted. And my arms are open wide because you know just what to say. And you know just what to do. I want to tell you so much. Olive juice. <laughs> Thanks. Nice. Nice. John, I love the uh, way you were handling the microphone there at the very beginning. I'm pretty sure that's what was going on. Yeah, that, I was uh, just warming yeah. the mic up. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Inside my mind a thousand times. Mm -hmm. It's the Ooh, opening what? of Duke Nukem, except you decide to go do karaoke at the strip bar before blasting your way through. I'm sorry, Thank everything you. sounds dirty now, Ken. So when you talk about the opening of Duke Nukem, I can't help but think uh, something else. So uh, anybody anybody else who's next? Who follows John? I'm, I'm going to do You're So Vain. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this, this is... Son of a gun. Well, um, I have to say that the administrator only knows the chorus, but that okay. won't stop her. <laughs> Cool. You walked into the party like you were walking onto a yacht. <laughs> Your hat strategically dipped below one eye. Your scarf, it was apricot. You had one eye in the mirror as you watched yourself go by. And all the girls dreamed that they'd be your partner. They'd be your partner and you're so vain. You probably think this song is about you. You're so vain. I bet you think his song is about you. Don't you? Don't you? You're so vain. You probably think this song is about you. You're so vain. I bet you think this song is about you. Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? <laughs> okay, musical trivia real quick. Musical trivia. That was a hit by Carly Simon. Who's the male vocalist singing harmony in that song with Carly? Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger it, it is. is. It is. Holy crap. Next time you listen to that song and you hear the chorus, you're going to go, oh, my God, that is Mick Jagger. It's unmistakable. And One funny thing know. is, some people are like, that song has to be about Mick Jagger. It's like, well, Mick's singing on it, so maybe not. Now, that song was about Warren Beatty. Yeah, they yes. say it was about Warren uh, Beatty. No yeah. way. Well, she did. Carly Simon a yeah, few years ago came out yeah. finally and said, yeah, it's about Warren Beatty. Mm -hmm. so His hair go. was perfect, just like a werewolf of London. So, uh, uh, so who is next? Who's next? I'll hop into this. Do it. As, go ahead, um, Matt. My, I wonder this artistic boy, Yusuke, singing Love is a Battlefield. We are young, <laughs> heartache to heartache, we stand. No promises, no demands. Love is a battlefield. <laughs> we are strong. <laughs> no one can tell us we're wrong. Searching our hearts for so long. Both of us knowing. Love is a battlefield. Oh, <laughs> delightful. That was absolutely delightful. Matt. I, I don't know. I don't know, uh, Matt, but I think most of the chat room is smoking now. They're just <laughs> asking after go having a cigarette. And <laughs> so it's down to John or Jan. Which of the Johns, the Jan Johns or the John Lowry, will it be? I'll give it a shot. I'm trying to figure out what I so. Who's, who plays Mrs. Potts? When you rush around in hopeless circles. What's her name? Angela oh, uh, Lansbury. Lansbury. Angela Lansbury. Dame, Dame best, Angela Lansbury. The best legs. You ever seen her legs? Like, oh my God. The, 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 are they I don't know. I don't know. Who sits she around going, gams. oh man, Angela Lansbury's legs. Oh, and she was on Broadway. Oh. Was oh. Everybody yes. who watches Murder, She Wrote thinks that. No, but, but you ASDS. watch, you know, she's she's in the movie, uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray, as the love interest. 
Is there a painting I mean, of she, her legs up in the closet somewhere? Yeah, and she she's like 18 years old. Angela Lansbury, when she was younger, was absolutely stunning. Yeah, those so legs at 18. Beautiful woman. But she also, from what I understand, played a middle-aged woman <laughs> in the Manchurian Candidate when she was very young. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, she is good makeup. So fabulous. She she's is an me. idol of mine. <laughs> Angela. Okay, Mrs. Potts. Okay, <laughs> Angela Lansbury. Dark in the city, night is a wire. Steam in the subway, earth is a fire. Da 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 don't, you, don't have your, you don't have your script? You want me to shoot that over to you? Oh, no, I have it, but I don't know that the, the melody that well. Woman. Da, 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 and I'm hungry like the wolf. Oh, it's not the whole thing. <laughs> Straddle the line I'm, in Discord and rhyme. I'm on the, I'm on the hunt. I'm, I'm after, after you. you. Everybody. Is the line. With, juices, with juices like wine, and I'm hungry like a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous, absolutely fabulous. <laughs> wonderful, La simply wonderful. And what about you, John Lowry? <laughs> Sweet dreams are made of this. <laughs> Who am I to disagree? <laughs> I travel the world and the seven seas. Everybody's looking for something. Some of them want to use you. <laughs> Some of them want to get used by you. Some of them want to abuse you. Some of them want to be abused. Dreams, who am I to disagree? <laughs> I travel the world <laughs> in the seven seas. Everybody is looking for something. And I don't know this next part. Who? No, it's, can I just say my, my most favorite part of that, John, was because uh, Ellen is right above you in, uh -huh. um, and it, so she was like jamming out. Your girl was jamming out to your work. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Hey, John, nice. John, if, if you're under her, yeah, on my screen, you're not. But for Jan's uh, 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 appreciation, will you just go like this? Sure. <laughs> oh, well, I guess. Here's looking up your old address. <laughs> we, uh, Wes, great. we're at $27,547. Can we maybe make it to 28000 Get to twenty eight before the end can of our get, big finale here tonight, guys. If you my can, birthday, anybody, if you can. Drop some more uh, anything and everything, please. My birthday well, is June 28th, so I think 28 is the number we have. 28 to is a great number. Like great it. number. Well, let's Wait, see if we can move some folks with this wonderful rendition of, and I think Dolly Parton, not only great performer, wonderful uh, singer, writer, an incredible writer as well, uh, oh, but uh, an incredible human being. She's just wonderful. Dolly is, is great. Uh, and if you ever get a chance, take Jolene, if you if you have a, a, an old disc. Of, <laughs> Play yeah. the 45 and 33 speed. Exactly oh, right. And it, so sounds, good. it sounds like a dude, and it's like, Jolene, so you're awesome. Jolene, Jolene, <laughs> Jolene. That's what it sounds like, and it's holy so cool. Whoa, 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 it's whoa, 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 whoa. the coolest. Hold, yeah. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Anonymous oh. just donated $457. We are now at twenty-eight thousand dollars oh, for the Alzheimer's baby. Association. We love you, Anonymous. Whoever you we are, love you, Anonymous. Oh, fucking Anonymous. Love you. We are sending you so much love. That is um, wonderful. It came so much through. Good. If it came through as a request for Mr. Mercer, I would love to hear an anecdote from Essex's childhood, perhaps including his best Varen impression. We can hold my song off for that donation from Anonymous. That was and go whoever right, did that. Seriously, go thank right you. to Matt Mercer. <laughs> yeah, I, thank you. Can't can't say no to that. Well, um, in certain childhoods, it can grow a bit um, challenging having a brother, especially one who is a bit rambunctious and does not necessarily appreciate your um, studious duties. So when you go to read to yourself silently in the mornings uh, before, you know, not playing with the children that avoid you at the various open play spaces, and you'll find that your um, study book has been filled with jam. It's a bit frustrating. 
And when you find out or assume that it is your brother Varen who did so, and you go and tell him, please do not put gem into my books. And he turns to you and says, well, that wasn't me. That would be ridiculous. What do you think? Is that so funny? Meh, meh, meh. I still hate him. <laughs> I still, I don't really hate him. He's one, he's, he's sweet, a bit misguided. But um, nevertheless, I think back to that. And to this day, I realized that that was where I began my appreciation for gem. Not because <laughs> I like the flavor, but because it reminds me of my brother. And we've been apart for some time. So when I have the opportunity, I'm thankful for it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Bravo. Amazing. Well, I don't know. I don't know what your name is, Anonymous, but I will dedicate my song, which will not nearly be as poetic or beautiful or wonderful as Matt Mercer's, but it does have does have the benefit of being written by Dolly Parton. So this is the musical mutant Fox. <laughs> Should stay when I would only be in your way. And so I'll go. And yet I know I'll think of you each step of the way. <laughs> and I will always love I will always love you. That sounded painful. <laughs> and I'm not going to subject anybody to any more of that. So but I love this spittle. I love the spittle. I always love spittle in a song. Yes. I got to tell you, that's what puts you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Spittle. That's vocal technique, baby. That's vocal yeah. technique. There it is. You can, if you get the best rock and rollers and you scrape out their microphones of all the excess spittle, you could clone them. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Cloning <laughs> rock and rollers. Ew. I, when, when, I, when I used to do the, uh, uh, when I first started doing the announcing for the Washington Capitals doing the, uh, the, the hockey games, the guy who was the PA announcer before me had been there for about 20 years. I've now been there 22 years. But the guy who was there before me had been there 20 years, and they had this old Sure 57 mic with a dent in it. Evidently, somebody had beaten it like it was, uh, you know, in a oh, hockey sure. fight. 57 mics yeah. had a dent in it. Had a nice too. dent in it. Right. But this guy would eat food and popcorn and talk into it so much that i i spent time with like little pins i'd bring pins in and try to slowly Ugh. uh you know Extract. like yeah like i was some kind of a uh, uh you know an archaeologist digging away to past generations of of pa announcer spittle and popcorn and it was hideous snacks hideous <laughs> but they could have they could have cloned him. they could have cloned him yeah it's you they they hand a microphone you guys ever had someone hand a microphone to you and just be like oh mm -hmm. or or go into the uh, studio <laughs> with headphones after somebody had already been in there who had a very very sweaty sweaty session. head yeah That's yeah yeah no. they were i like them fun them oh my god you know so great. terrifying oh we don't play that game <laughs> that's don't see them headphones with them sweaty heads <laughs> at least covid brought an end to that They've at least wiped them down and sprayed them and all that kind of stuff. So you would True that. mostly. Yeah. <laughs> mostly. If you're lucky. So uh guys, are you ready to create a video game from scratch? Okay. How? Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask our crowd over here. I'm looking over to the right side now. I'm looking at the chat room, and I want you guys to tell me what the name of this video game, and it's not a video game that's ever been done. Don't tell me you want Dota 3 or you want Elder Scrolls 6 or you want anything like that because that's not what we're doing. This is a game that has never been played, never will be played again. So throw out a name of what you think would be an amazing video game or a horrifying video game. We're up for either. I see Defense Force 4 Rapture Initiative. John Defense Force 4 Rapture. Yeah, that's it. Thicky Quest, Defense. Young Parchment Rolls 7. <laughs> Magic versus Science, The Reckoning, Voice Idols on Ice. <laughs> Army of John's Good Advice Dome, sequel to Bad Advice Dome. 
We got the the addable dash grocery store edition. too. Oh, you guys, you guys, what is this? Voice idols on ice. I don't think we can do better than that. <laughs> Neurodivergent friendship simulator. That is really specific. <laughs> Critical role of the game. That's taken. I understand. Is it copyrighted, Matt? I think so. I hope eventually. Toot, toot patrol. I like toot patrol. Toot, toot patrol. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do this. We're going to go with Defense Force 4 Toot Patrol. (laughs) Oh, my God. We're going to put two of them together. So this game will be, it will be a sequel, Defense Force 4 Toot Patrol. I need the name of the hero of this game. What is the name of the hero of this game? So we're going to start seeing some names of heroes coming across here. Everybody's got their pieces of paper, has written down our title, Defense Force 4, Toot Patrol. John Johnson. John Johnson, Handy McAnderson, uh, Duke Nukem, Sir Sir Farts Farts a lot. (laughs) What do you think, guys? Hey, I Uh, resemble that remark. I like John Johnson. John Johnson. Hamuel Adams. The hero, John Johnson, I think. John Johnson is our hero, and we're going to go then with uh, the sidekick, Hamuel Adams. Dolph Milson. That is a fantastic name. (laughs) Milson? Dolph Milson. Then let's make that the sidekick, Dolph Milson. That's a good one, Atticus. Can 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 it be it milf son? Milf son. Milf son. Yeah. It's milf son. Yeah. yeah. Milf son. Yeah. yeah. Dolph Mother Milfson. I'd like to, etc. John son. Johnson Dolph will be Milfson. our hero. Our sidekick is Dolph Milfson. Uh, now we need to know what is the name of our villain of this piece. What is the name of the villain oh, this in this piece? Good. We're waiting. Professor McFaffer. I like that. I'm going with the first one. Our villain is Professor McFaffer. Villain McVillain face. <laughs> pants, now we do need a sidekick feet. so we can pull one of these names as our uh, sidekick for the villain. Pants feet as the sidekick. Pants. How about pants feet? Pants yeah. feet. Pants, pants, pants feet. feet. Okay. Wait, hold on. It's hands feet or pants? No, no. Pants, pants feet. Pants, pants, pants. pants. pants feet will be the sidekick. Okay. <laughs> Hands All right, I fantastic. need I need someone to start shouting out some everyday household items. Oh dear, tampons. Ha- what could possibly items. go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? A I plunger, see. toaster, lamp, spoon. Chatty Daddy three thousand. I like that. Oh All right. no, no, no! Dildo, no. <laughs> fork, spatula, conditioner. A Steely Dan. A Steely Dan. Uh, fruit, a Steely bowl. Dan. All right, a we'll throw in a Steely Dan. Dan. A, it's going to be a Steely Dan. A Steely Dan. Corgi with an attitude. <laughs> All right, good. We're going to. OK, so that's it. We've got a Corgi with an attitude. <laughs> and okay. now I need to know the name of the ultimate weapon. What is the name of the ultimate oh, weapon? No. The shark gun. Shark gun the shark gun Don, you're making stuff up on your own this is supposed to come from the crowd. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's the corgi with an attitude All right. the ultimate weapon is the corgi red slice with an the stink tubinator uh vagina cock uh, I don't we think got that. uh we got a blorber blorbernator let's, uh let's a grumpy do dachshund <laughs> Sword of, laser the sword of infinite bucks. Someone, someone I don't did know. suggest a shark I, gun, John. <laughs> they said that's just for you. They're, you're, they're, they've got your back on that one. The MacGuffin. Existential uh, dread. That's a grumpy funny. dachshund. I'm going to go with the grumpy dachshund shark gun. Now, I'm sorry. Please spell shark. S H A R T. What is a shark? A no, shark Alan, is when you think no, you're going to fart, but you in life. fact shit doors in your pants. Doors to hell That's a shark. opening. <laughs> so, and the doors of hell are fully open. Our, our ultimate we- Matt's face is melting, guys. You are melting Matt's face. <laughs> oh, so, shark. <laughs> so yeah, our ultimate so the- weapon, the ultimate weapon is the grumpy dachshund shark gun. <laughs> the grumpy dachshund oh shark gun. Uh, now, I need to know where this is. Is this in a city? Is it on a planet? Where are we? And are you going to put this in chat, or am I supposed to be writing no, it down? We're supposed to be writing it all down. That. We're going to oh, write it all fuck down. Me running. Uh, get, a, get a pen, John. Right. It's analog. Give me a minimal. Give me a minimal roll and cue me. We're someone, in, someone says Uranus. Florida, Uranus, that, Appalachia, uh, Gallifrey, Gluteus Prime, New Boston. 
<laughs> gluteus Prime. That's funny. The planet of Gluteus Prime. Like gluteus, gluteus Prime. All right. Good job. That's Liminal that. space. Sperm Bank Dublin. <laughs> is it, okay. A sperm. Right. A sperm well, bank in Dublin. Riley. Okay. Hey Ken, can you put all this in the chat, please? So we're all. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm not keeping we're track. On Gluteus Prime. Oh, yes, but we are also in Goat Valley. Goat Valley. <laughs> oh no. Goat Valley. Goat. We are in Goat oh, Valley. Goodness. Goat Valley. On, Atticus, on pass this on. Uh, give me. We're about give to me ruin a, a job. Story. A pastime. Give me a job. Some kind of uh, of occupation. Oh man. Hooker. Someone keeps throwing sperm bank in there like they're just tossing it off. Look, Turlin, enough of the sperm bank. <laughs> <laughs> Fart collector. <laughs> now we're getting sperm collector, sperm bank cleaner. Podcaster, uh, sperm bank carpenter, wizardry, sperm internet bank dungeon magazine master. magazine organizer. No, cook, that's just somebody who, who's A kavufasug. I don't know what that is. Uh, bull sperm milk. Oh, no, no, oh, no, what? no, no. D&D &D player. Uh, courier, postman, carpenter, content creator, <laughs> goldfish, goldfish caretaker. Goldfish caretaker. I like influencer. Goldfish. <laughs> okay, we have a goldfish influencer. <laughs> a goldfish influencer. Okay. Goldfish. Inf now, is that John Johnson's uh, career? Uh, John Johnson's career is a goldfish influencer. Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, or he, does he or influence she. goldfish to do things or does um, he use goldfish to influence people? Now, I need to know what is the name? I what think that's is... to be revealed, John. Right. St. John. I need to know the name of the mentor authority figure, a mentor type authority figure. So it would basically be like the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi or the, uh, you know, the Qui-Gon, the... The old barf. master barf. kind of thing. Somebody just suggested barf. Barf? Barf. He's half is... man, half dog. He's his own best friend. <laughs> Grog give me, give me a last law. name, a last name for barf. Ass McShoot. Barf Upchuck. I see barf we have a smart McBig Brain. How about we go barf McBig Brain? <laughs> That's a good one. Barf McBig Barf brain. McLovin. Big brain. Okay. Barf McBig Brain. All right, here we go now. I need to know who is going to be our hero, John Johnson, the goldfish influencer. Ooh, who wants to play? Guys in the crowd, let us know. Who do you think should play John Johnson, our hero, the uh, the influencer? We gotta... uh, I'm seeing Jan, Matt, 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 Jan. It's like back and forth here. I feel like we're all, somebody's going to get voted. One off of the two of them. Any second. Um, we, we've got an Jan Ellen Jan thrown Jan in Jan there. Matt, Matt, Matt. Jan, I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make John, uh, uh, Matt, you are going to be John Johnson, the hero. Okay. And uh, Jan, you will be the sidekick, uh, Dolph Milfson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we change Matt's name to John St. Johnson? <laughs> no. I, I think that's that's up to him. Uh, I, I would love to hear him heckle and, and imitate me. That would be fun. <laughs> we Just got, be an asshole. You're right, Celix. We, we should have pulled on this. <laughs> we've got uh, we've got our villain here now. Who is going to play our villain, Professor McFaffer? Now, I'd let you guys know I'm going to be the narrator in this one. So you get to I'll be Professor McFaffer. Else. Professor McFaffer? Okay, John. I have no problem being McFaffer. I'm from a Saint long line John. of McFaffers. John St. John will be... Professor McFaffer. So we need to know who Pants Feet, the sidekick, is. <laughs> now, you're down between John. Ellen or John. One of them is going to be one of them is going to be the be, mentor. You want to be I, Barth I be the Corgi. I want to be the Corgi with an attitude. Well, like there is no corgi with an attitude. We have a grumpy dachshund with a shark gun. Oh, actually, the court you can you can no you can be the it, it's just an item. That's one of our our items. But you can do the sound effects. I'll let you do the sound effects of uh, the corgi with the attitude and and grumpy dachshund. I want to be both of them. Okay, what do well, I need to write down? Uh, John, the reason <laughs> you are Professor McFaffer, the villain. The yeah. name of the game is Defense Force 4 <laughs> Toot Patrol. Uh, the three household items are the Chatty Daddy 3000, a Steely Dan, and a Corgi with an Attitude. Uh, the ultimate weapon, which will not reveal itself until later, is the Grumpy Dachshund Shark Gun. Uh, 
Well, okay, wait, uh, wait, wait. There was a, the 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 Chatty Daddy Three Thousand, the Steely Dan, and the the what? The Corgi with an attitude. Corgi with an attitude, and that that's right. uh, Ellen McLean. That is uh, well, uh, she's going to be making that that noise. Yeah, she'll be making all those noises. So, uh, oh, yeah. now pants feet. Uh, John, do you want to be the sidekick pants feet to John St. John's? Well, it'll be a full John. Sure, full John slate. So we got uh, John Patrick Lowry, JPL, is going to be Pants Feet the Sidekick. <laughs> and uh, so, Ellen, Ellen, you are going to be the great grand mentor ghost who will come in at some point by the name of Barf McBigbrain. All right. Okay. Absolute so, chaos. <laughs> no, it, it is never anything but, Matt, never anything but. So, here we go. This, That's my true. friends, is a video <laughs> game that you will see only here. Thank God for the first time and last time ever, a game that should not even be happening right now. This is Defense Force 4, Toot Patrol. <laughs> you still have time to miss this if you hurry. <laughs> we, we join our hero on the planet of Gluteus Prime, a speckled pink looking planet. And if you make your way slowly, deeply into its crevices you will find the land of goat valley there john johnson sometimes known as john st johnson is hard at work being a goldfish influencer you see i spend my days trying to be an influencer for goldfish that means i go on my youtube channel and do videos where i make a cool voice his goldfish looked back at him and bubbled. Their eyes connected. I'm so glad you're here next to me, buddy. Without you, Dolph, I'd be lost in the waters of Gluteus Prime. Dolph Milson, not just a goldfish, but a sentient goldfish. One that knew deep, dark secrets. Oh, I feel so thrilled that you want me around too, because I have all these deep, dark secrets inside me. And as I roll around in this fishbowl, knowing that everyone can see me, oh. it feels so right. Hey, really energetic for a goldfish. It's a shame I can't understand your language, but I'm glad I can influence you with my delightful online persona. So as the two of them connected, tried to speak a similar language of eye contact somewhere watching on the interwebs of Gluteus Prime was the villainous Professor McFaffer, who had been tuned in to the Goldfish, Goldfish Influencer channel for weeks. Oh, for God's sake, get it right, narrator, for God's sake. Oh, assistant, bring me my Chatty Daddy 3000. Oh, yeah, 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 and yeah, a okay. steely and a steely dan don't interrupt me i need them i'm watching over that that uh, ridiculous dolph milfson of the new jersey milfsons new jersey was you, a place in goat valley but if I didn't what exit you, i never get to talk that's what i'm saying <laughs> i can only interrupt that's my only function in life is to interrupt all right i'll go get the steely dan and what what was the other thing you wanted I, I need the Chatty Daddy 3000 as well. The, the Chatty Daddy 3000 is down. We got the Chatty Daddy uh, 2500. We got the Chatty uh, Daddy And bring along my, my Corgi with an attitude. I need right. to talk to that little bitch. Right, right. Uh, corgi, Corgi. <laughs> Pants McPhee grabbed a large box and began assembling their implements of destruction. And they made their way to the McFaffer mobile. All right, everybody pile in. We're going to go visit Barf McBag Big Brain or whatever the fuck his name is right now and set things straight. We've got business to do and I need more of those those Dolph Milfson fish. Oh, right. As, as, evil, as evil as he was, Professor McFaffer was a poor note taker. McFaffer, <laughs> McFaffer, I need to sit in your lap. McFaffer. I won't ride along unless I sit in your lap. <laughs> Fine, get in my lap. We'll talk about the first thing that pops up. <laughs> the the oh, corgi oh, left the box, jumped on the lap of McFaffer, and Pants McFeet got behind the wheel. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, everyone, uh, seatbelts on? I mean, I know we're evil, but we need to be careful as well. <laughs> 
Check! Seatbelt's on now, let's go already! All right. Light speed! Off they traveled to some distant ramp off New Jersey in Goat Valley, which was indeed a place on Gluteus Prime. And there, waiting, unawares, was once again John Johnson, trying to communicate with Dolph Milson, but realizing that he needed help from an old lost source of inspiration. Look here, Dolph. It's been great to have you as a partner, but I have to... Hold on, I think I'm still live streaming. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Close it. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm an influencer. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh, I feel so good to not have to put that persona anymore for my <laughs> online database. But in all honesty, Dolph, you've been a wonderful friend. And, and having you by my side just fills me with an absolute sense of, of calm and strength. And I just, I, I wish that we could share our thoughts together. And I feel like the only person that could help us was uh, this individual who I, I used to train under when I was in college. This, this incredible figure that I'd love for you to meet named Barf McBigbrain. Oh. Barf was a spectral spirit constantly spewing ectoplasm in a nauseous yet knowledgeable way. Barf made her appearance in front of John St. Johnson. John Barf Johnson, I am here. It's been a rough few years for you, Barf. I'm sorry. <laughs> but while I've been gone, I I learned goldfish. I can translate goldfish. That that's wonderful. Adolf, please uh, speak to Barf and, and maybe we can bridge this gap between us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Dolph Milson is speaking from her castle. She has a castle in her ball, and she wants you to join her in her castle in the water. I, I appreciate that. Could you let Dolph know that just from a general disparity in size between myself and a goldfish, it would be both disastrous to to their habitat and my person to do so. Is there an alternate option? Yes. Dolph says that if you put her in your mouth carefully into your cheek, <laughs> you can keep her there. Right. And like the great can... hamsters of old. Yes, yes. <laughs> Put her in your jowl and she will speak. Just oh, as John was about to do this, holding the fish gently, carefully in his hand as it spoke lovingly to him, and he slowly dropped it closer to his mouth. The door kicked in, and there, standing at the door, was Professor McFaffer and Pants Feet, the evil sidekick. Pants Feet, my evil sidekick, get over here and get a hold of that Jabba the Barf Hut-looking motherfucker over there and shut her down! All right, all right. Uh, my boss, uh, P Professor McFaffer here, is, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's really bad and he's evil, and, and you better do what he says because he's bad and evil and, and, and he'll do really n nasty stuff to you because he's evil. Don't forget it's to tell him that I brought a corgi with an attitude and I'm willing to use it. All right, he's got, he's, got a, he's got a corgi with an attitude and he's willing to use it. And, and this corgi has a really bad, it's evil. My goodness, Dolph, they have a corgi with an attitude. Stay, I, I want to stay, I want to stay on, 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 on Professor McFaffer's lap. And I yet, what happened then was extreme violence and an acting toward de force as the corgi with an attitude attacked <laughs> Barf McBigBrain. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Wait. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! You're Let them fight. On me. Oh. <laughs> that idiot's attacking herself! Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> Golf, the only way we're gonna get out of here alive is we have we have to take Barb's final words to heart. Are you ready, friend? Oh, 
All right. Hope you taste okay. <laughs> Into the mouth. <laughs> Dolph went. And suddenly the two were able to communicate clearly for the first time. It's the worm Uroboros. He ate the person he's influencing. Oh, oh this is exciting. Uh, can you hear me? Dolph, I can. Hi, Dolph. Hi, this is amazing. Wow. Hi. Uh, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about your, your uh, oral health care. Uh, oh, oh, I see oh. a little bit of calculus spilled up on the, on the uh, back molars. Oh, yeah, oh, and yeah. just sure. as the dental conversation was about to get thick, that was when Professor McFasser struck. McFasser struck with the steely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, boss! Get him! Really drill him! Yeah, keep it! Keep it! Get, get back, Jack! Get back, right. Jack! In and out, and 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 in and out. And in and out. There quick, was only one quick way. Quick, Brad Feet, give me the Chatty Daddy 3000. It's time for insertion. The yeah. Chatty Daddy was coming out, and there was only one weapon that could defeat the two evildoers, and yet the only one who knew was currently deep. Inside, John St. Johnson. Dolph, if there was ever a moment in our life of long, arduous, unspoken tension, let this be the one where you finally give me the proper guidance to save both of our lives. What? Do, do you know what a shart is? I, I mean, I've heard about it. I mean, I have never done it myself. Not at all. That'd be really embarrassing. Why? Why do you ask? Uh, that, no reason, but you know, if we got the grumpy Dotson Dotson shark gun, that is the way. That exists, but that's yeah. just an old legend. No, it's been around. It's been a kind of like me. <laughs> well, actually, it's longer than it is round, but you know, length doesn't matter. Girth is everything, right? Should we well. be doing something evil right about now? <laughs> As they contemplated their evil, it was time for John Johnson to look in the one place. The only place he could find a grumpy dachshund shark gun. Ich John Johnson. I will shot for ah. you. Are you ready for me to shot all over? All over. He heard the voice calling to him, but Professor where was it coming from? Oh, it was goodness. coming from his asshole. It had been in his asshole the entire time. <laughs> I am here and I am shouting. Dolph, I shout so good. <laughs> good. Dolph, I, 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 I am afraid my lower back issues prevent me from reaching far enough. But since you're already part way inside my body, maybe you can travel through the rest of me and find it on the other end. Go, Dolph, save us. You're the true hero. Just Dolph keep Milson. swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> Dolph Milson became like a Jedi sniper in an X-Wing and put herself in position to turn John Johnson and aim at Professor McFaffer and Pence McFeet, who saw something they never thought they would see. I'm at your asshole. An explosion. Was it a fart? No, it smelled like that. But there was more action and it's more moisture. Wet! Oh, it's wet! It was a shirt and it was grumpy and it was from a dachshund and it stung and it burned. And the two of them feeling made their way out in agony and defeat. Boss, they sharded your pants. <laughs> Me, pants, feet. I've been sharded. They sharded your pants. Boss. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> in his deepest, sharp voice, John Johnson, soiled yet victorious, had this to say. John, say, hail to the shark, baby. <laughs> hail to the shark, baby. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Produced by Tetsuya Nomura. So, how many out there are ready to buy this game today? <laughs> that was a game? <laughs> I'd play that game. I'd play that game when no one was looking. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some, some things you do in private. You know, it's a guilty play. <laughs> Once again, another successful voice of Was it? Was it? I think... <laughs>
as successful as any of them have ever been. <laughs> yeah, it did make me laugh until I teared up. So there was some fun. Thank you, Matt Mercer, for the hilarity that was your role in this. Oh my God. A poll, oh, a poll going up in chat oh. right now. Uh, we have one yes, uh, zero no's, and we have 14 votes for Shart. <laughs> That's fair. That's oh, by the way, um, uh, in, in a couple of move, uh, uh, years, about a year and a half from now, uh, me and my partner, we're going to retire by moving to New Mexico. And when I get there, I'm going to get a little tiny dog and I'm going to name him Shart. And I will be bringing him to my panels at conventions. You'll all get Excellent. to meet the actual Shart. <laughs> well, what, little, you mean the other Shart that you would bring to oh, my, my little dog Shart. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'll double the Shart, double the fun. It'll be great. There you I go. always, I always learn something, Wes Johnson. <laughs> I always learn something. What, what did you learn today, Ellen? Yeah, Please share. I learned what a shark is. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I learned something today. We, we look at that. Yep, twenty-eight thousand one hundred sixty dollars, guys. Wow! Hell yeah, fantastic. All right, Thank we raised so like 3000 just sitting here today, didn't we? We have proven Almost, that yeah. we will shart for funds, especially when it comes to a good cause. <laughs> Char- yep. Charity. Thank it's you. worth dirtying <laughs> your, your pants for. That's right. <laughs> so what I'd love to do here is go around the room really quickly and find out where everybody is going to be here in the future so that we may continually and successfully stalk you. Let's start off with Jan Johns. Oh, man, you always start with me. It gets me nervous. I start sweating. Um... <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Instagram at, at Jan John's VO, and then I don't even know what my Twitter handle is. I'm working on it. I'm I'm building back, Wes. Building I, back. I think it's something along the same lines. Just look up Jan, Jan John. John's voice actor, something like that. You're in there. Yeah, yeah, and, and then yeah, and then yeah, that's where I am. And Facebook. <laughs> but I'm not and, on. And I and I think a wonderful place was being in Matt Mercer's cheek. Can I just say it was the oh, yeah. glorious moment of my life. It was like a velvet hallway. <laughs> it was it was genuinely my Vel- pleasure, but I do apologize for the lack of brush that I've been doing recently. Oh no. <laughs> it was the pandemic. Nobody brushed, nobody wore pants. It's just how things are. Uh so go go ahead, uh John and Ellen. Um, okay, well, first, I'd just like to say, have you ever just been, you know, kind of doing a video game about sharding and then suddenly discover that there's this red stuff on your thumb? Mm. Oh, my goodness. Have no idea where that came from. Hey, don't point that yeah. red thumb at us. We don't know where it's been. <laughs> Nor do I, my friend. Was that, is, that, is that something just because, you know, very vigorous uh, <clears throat> thumb? I'm thumb looking thumb around right? for anything that has red ink on it or anything. Uh-huh. It's like nothing. Anyway, uh, Ellen and I blood, are going mother, to blood. be at uh, NERCON in uh, Linköping, Sweden, uh, the last weekend, the nice. well, last week of uh, July. And uh, then we're going to be at, um, oh, I forget the name of the con. It's in uh, South Bend, Indiana, last <coughs> weekend in August. Um, and South Bend, I have to tell you, I used to play there uh, when I was in my band in, in my youth at a great place called Vegetable Buddies. And we got the, it was a biker bar and oh, we got fun. to stay with the managers in their house. And these managers had only two things in their living room a half rebuilt 1952 Harley Davidson and the Harvard classics. Ooh. Those were the two things in their living room. And I, and vegetable buddies had the best graffiti that I've ever seen. It was, we have to remember it was a biker bar and you go into the men's room and over the urinals, someone had written, please do not eat the urinal cakes. Oh, oh man. And when I you thought, have to ask, yeah, this is yeah. A biker bar. That was a PSA. You know, people were trying to be helpful. Yeah. So anyway, so we're going to South Bend uh, last uh, weekend weekend in August. Um, you can always find us uh, at HarryNile.com. Um, <coughs> my uh, my uh, audio drama site. Uh, Ellen is in lots of episodes. I'm in lots of. Episodes. Those are very like, cool. Good listening, guys. Uh, yeah, Sherlock Holmes and Harry Nile, all kinds of murder mysteries and all kinds of fun. Um, and let's see, anywhere else? I think. Uh, uh, and you know, and you can find both of us on Facebook. Well, um, and we're also going to be at PAX here in Seattle, right, over right, Labor Day weekend. PAX West, right? PAX yes. West will be there. Um, uh, I think that's kind of it for us, right? Can you think of anything else? No, okay, cool. Uh, how about you, John? Where are you going to be? Tell us about uh, all the appearances and the boats and the whole thing. Okay, uh, the next appearance I have is about three and a half weeks from now. I will be at Kitsune Con in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Always a favorite. 
Um, three and a half weeks after that, I will be at Retro Mesa in Oslo, Norway. Uh, uh, into Norway. For you guys are all leaving the country. I, I, my question yeah. is, will you come back? <clears throat> once oh, we'll you're come gone. back. <laughs> okay. We'll come back. Um, let's see a uh, few things going on between then and uh, that are not convention things, but um, uh, my Duke Nukem ordained minister deal. I'll be doing weddings in Virginia and in Bakersfield, California and Saturday, October 8th, Lake City Comic Con in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, nice. I have a, a full length CG motion picture coming out on Netflix before the end of the year where I play an animated bear. I can't tell you any more than that, except that I get the last line in the film and the bear is adorable. And I like that I get to talk like a bear. And um, <clears throat> what That's else do we have? That's a dead on bear, by the way, man. Like dead on Thank bear. you. Thank you. That's my favorite bear, bear read. And then, of course, like King that. Kong Cruise is uh, next February or March, but uh, we don't need to talk about that now. It's too far off. But please do visit kingkongcruise.com <laughs> and see that what my convention is all about. It's about people like the ones here in this meeting uh, going on a cruise with you where convention meets vacation. And uh, we have adventures with the attendees for a full week on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship from Orlando to the Bahamas and back and it's a grand grand time how about you it man, is. it's a great time it is a yeah, great yeah. time <clears throat> uh yeah you can find me on uh twitter at matthew mercer or instagram at matthew mercer vo uh you can also find uh me and many of my compatriots most thursday nights at 7 p.m pacific on our twitch channel critical role where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors and friends uh play dungeons and dragons and occasionally other games and uh our it's a grand time series. It's it's a fun bit of random. Uh, I've looked in on it and it looks hilarious and fun. I'm I'm gonna look more. Please do it's 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 mm. a lot of fun. It's a lot of some of it's funny, some of it's really dramatic, a lot of it's mm -hmm. emotional, but it's just it's it's hard. Well, stories everybody everybody's improv. still shocked and upset about calamity. I mentioned it earlier, and there was just a whole line of people in the chat room going, "No, no, <laughs> uh, trauma." We give you trauma too, which is fun. <laughs> um, and also check out Legend of Vox Machina, our animated series on Prime Video, based on mm. our first Critical Role campaign. So yeah, cool. Fantastic. And uh, you can find me on uh, at Wes Johnson Voice on Twitter. I think I'm Wes Johnson on uh, Instagram, Wes Johnson Actor on TikTok. I don't know. I, there's some real estate agent who's getting all the Wes Johnson stuff out there. So I can't actually just get my name for the most part. But uh, uh, I know, I know. I'll, I'll be doing a Star Trek movie coming up this fall. I've got a couple of short films that I've been working on. Uh, one of them is out in festivals called Thank You, another called Celtic Cross, and one that I can't talk about quite yet that's uh we're working on uh there are always ndas in place about things and uh i'll be doing the capitals again in the fall going to be doing the city open uh, tennis tournament uh coming up in august where they will force me force me to wear shorts i'm not looking forward to it and <laughs> shouldn't be either but uh basically you know this whole thing has been a wonderful dream this past week to get together with a ton of my friends and have some fun to be silly. Talk about things also that really matter, that hit close to home and that uh, that mean the world to us and that everybody comes out to fight Alzheimer's. <sighs> I can't thank you all enough. And I, I want all of you guys here to give a big round of applause to uh, Ken Vigu, who has been just the hardest working, most indispensable, wonderful soul through this entire process, making everything happen, being completely overwhelmed and yet still continuing to make this function. Uh, he continues to work with uh, Chad 76. Uh, tell us about what you do, Ken. Yeah, uh, the Chad uh, Fallout 76 podcast, which uh, we're now in our second season. You can listen to some of the the voices uh, at Bethesda Games and uh, some of the developers, including Uncle Pete Hines, joining us as the judge, yeah. our villain this season. Um, so nice. We'll be finishing that out before uh, we take a short break to work on the Starfield podcast that we're doing, which is a sci-fi anthology series. So we have 13 different sci-fi writers coming up with some fun short stories set in the Starfield universe once the game launches next year. So, and all of this is wonderful. And and folks, you should stick around after this is done because we We're are not finished. There will be drawings for all the prizes that you've been signing up for for the past several weeks, including those noble chairs, which, oh my God, they are sexy. Yeah. They are really nice. You're going to want to check those out. Uh, what else are we giving away? We got, uh, so two noble chairs. We have mm -hmm. uh, Fallout 76 uh, on Xbox and PS4. 
and the Elder Scrolls Online Collector's Edition. We're pulling uh, five winners each on all consoles for that. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you're going to want to stick around for those things. And uh, what can I say that I haven't said already a million times? And I could say it a million. You times. do tend to repeat yourself. I do. And the, the thing I'm repeating right now, John, is thank you. I thank no, you. Thank guys. you, Wes. And thank you. This particular group right here has been very near and dear to my heart for years. And uh, it feels like old home week. Friends just getting together and playing and having fun and being silly. And I, I, I count everyone who's watching here today as friends of us because you reached out and you're doing good in this world. And if there's one thing that we need right now in this world is more people who are going to spread light. There's plenty of people who want to spread darkness. And I say in the most loving way and to use the words of confucius fuck those guys <laughs> let's all be positive yeah, let's what, let's spread the confucius light said. is that a direct yeah. quote i don't think it i've is. read that it one is. yeah, yeah. It is. No, <laughs> i mean but, but it's in chinese so you didn't get the, the, the oh the, yeah, yeah. i lost the translation. The translation yeah okay. it's a translation right. yeah right. 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 so uh Pretty thank accurate. you guys very much for being here thank you all for donating uh there's so much wonderful good that's going to come from what you've done folks you're going to be helping people out there who are dealing with Alzheimer's, who are dealing with uh, family, who have Alzheimer's. And you know what? Let's do this again next year. What do you guys say? You want to come back again next year and do this all over again? I'm in. Miss, hey. Miss Adrian Barbeau sends her regards and very much wants to join us. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. We'll Legend. introduce her to the world of sharks. She's going to love it. Uh <laughs> Or PR hey. agent, like, no. It's not Can I make a request for John St. John? When, when you finally do obtain, when, when, when Shart finds you, because that's how it should be, right? When that's you're how ready, it will be. Uh huh. Could you just tape or staple, whatever you feel like, just one piece of corn on Shart? <laughs> do you, when you eat corn, do you always go, see you tomorrow? <laughs> I do. Is this, this, this is, is why this I is love how we're going to end. This is how we're going to end. Mm -hmm. that's, she's like a guy with a that's, vagina that's, well that's <laughs> the vagina what are they oh, well, yeah. jen john's that's on all her the time we have vagina <laughs> this heartfelt charity this wonderful experience <laughs> right <laughs> thank you Awkward. all so much <laughs> all right folks we're going to uh to switch to an intermission screen uh while we we say goodbye to everyone off air uh give me a few minutes and then wes and i'll be back and we'll do some some drawings and uh, we also have quite a lot of thank yous for everyone. So uh, hold tight. We're going to switch to an intermission here. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, folks. Hey, Wastelanders. You know what sucks more than you? Your beer. Totally. That why punch make Bruce strong. Moose Punch Ale. It's not just beer. It's like energy. Yeah, dude. One sip and you'll kick the tits off a rat mule. Wait, do mules have tits? Dude, focus! Moose Punch Ale, the only beer allowed in the Brofit Gym. Chad, would you care to partake in a beverage? I would love to. Uh, thank you, uh, Moose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this tastes like shit, bro. Dude, shut up. We're still rolling. Just choke it down and say it's great. You know like brew? Brew guard. Put hair on chest. Chode a snowflake. <coughs> what did you put in this? Brahmin milk. Tato for acid. <coughs> and uh, septic. And blowfly gland. Strong stuff for strong brew. Uh, bring me a new Coca-Cola. Or a vodka. I can still taste it. Okay, so we can call it a limited edition and charge more for it and make another batch. Light still blinking. You try beer. Loose Punch Ale. Not for weenies, only for winners. Smooth, refreshing, made with the finest hops and other random ingredients. Moose Punch Ale. Now available in a sketchy vending machine near you. Ah, uh, shucks. Another boring old summer day. Why, it's hot enough to melt rocks out here. I sure wish there was something to do. Psst. Hey, kid. Wanna get wet? Huh? 
On a sweltering day, you can beat the heat by yelling until your folks bring you on down to Appalachia's premier destination for wholesome American fun, Slick Willies. Slick Willies? Sure. Everyone remembers Slick Willy. Isn't he that weird prospector cartoon from that guy that was sued by Hubris Comics? You bet your penny loafers it has. That fumbling but lovable old prospector went panning for gold in Appalachia and found water in them there hills. Slick Willie's water world is three acres of wet and wild aquatic attractions. Oh, gee, that sounds swell. Tell me more. Well... (laughs) <laughs> S is for slipping and sliding through the water. L is for loads of memories. <laughs> I is for inquisitions, insurance, and injuries. C is for celebrating families. <laughs> that sounds nifty. I want to get wet. I bet Mama, Sissy, and Grammy want to get wet, too. I bet they do. This is getting borderline problematic. Oh, well. Uh, Just you wait. There's more. Tell me more, mister. (laughs) W is for welcoming everyone together. I is for investigations pending. (laughs) L is for the laughter that drowns out all the screaming. Y is for you and me. (laughs) Wait, what? This is starting to sound iffy. Buck up, buckaroo. I'll tell you what, if you come on down today, you'll get a signature Slick Willie's Willy Wacker. Wow! Is it like the Wacker from that other amusement park? No, no. To avoid another lawsuit, this one is just different enough. This one looks just like old Willie himself. I want a Willy Wacker. Then grab your friends, grab your folks, and lay tracks on down to Slick Willie's Water World. Yay! All together now. <laughs> S is for singing and screaming in the water. L is for liability. I is for infections, irritants, and memories. C is for closing indefinitely. <laughs> Slick Willie's Water World is located off Exit 17 on Route 59 near Clarksburg. Thrill, adventure, and compound fractures await you at Slick Willie's. There we go. I got to turn off a bunch of titles. Casey Mangelo, yeah? Mangelo, Mangelo. Uh, I believe so. Let's turn off Matt. We got to turn. Got to turn off these titles. We're back, everybody, and we're very tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's Jan here. Turn that off. Turn that off. Uh, turn Ellen off, and uh, put me back up there. Okay. <laughs> How you, how you feeling, Wes? That was that was a wild, wild week. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Both Wes and I are going to go to Cancun after this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is uh, this was was exhausting, but oh man, it was such a good feeling to be able to do good and to bring light into this world right now and 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 to do it with all these gamers and streamers and 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 our community which has just been wonderful uh again i'm finding myself really can at a loss for words at how much gratitude i have in my heart towards everybody who is involved in this did you remember what i said going into this (laughs) i don't remember much of anything Going into this, because um, it was uh, $1,500 or so that uh, West raised last year when uh, yeah. he did some streams um, for the anniversary. With this, uh, yep, yeah. this guy. Um, so when he talked about doing it with the community, um, you thought like, you know, maybe double that would be good. I'm like, I don't think you realize, one, how much this community means to you. Uh, and two, uh, yeah. They mean a lot to me. Yeah. But they they really do. And uh you know, it isn't just the funds that everybody's been putting out. It's the fact that everybody's been sharing their stories of, of family and, and, and coming together, knowing that you're not alone when it comes to dealing with Alzheimer's. Uh, there are stories, there are people in our lives. And then there's the fear that this could happen to any one of us or anybody that we love. So 
you reach a hand out, you do what you can to help. And um, in this world, if we had more people who did that, what a much better place it would be, right? The Lurking Writer. Yeah, it's, uh, well, you, now you know about us and you can find us next year. Uh, falloutforhope.com, by the way. So if you want to yeah. keep, we will be doing uh, October 11th for the 25th anniversary of the Fallout as a game series. Uh, since Fallout 1 will be October 11th and we'll be fundraising again for uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital through the holiday season. And uh, Last year, what you did for St. Jude's Children's Hospital was remarkable. And and doing a Christmas story or Christmas carol yes, was you were so much so fun. so good as Scrooge. I, it so was, I, I loved playing Scrooge. It was like a bucket list thing. And then you had uh, a Pete Hines in his Marley. And he was that's awesome the thing. Marley. People, you're not afraid, Ken, to reach out to people and say, hey, we're trying to help folks. Will you help us? There are some people who shy away from that. But you are just a, such a kind, loving, wonderful individual that people just can't say no to you. Well, sometimes they do, but they shouldn't. <laughs> God, I'm so uncomfortable with praise. Uh, let's get to giveaways. Um, yes. All right. So first one we're going to pick here is, uh, so this is through Gleam. Uh, it does a random draw for winners here, automatically kicks out invalid entries, which are people who are naughty and tried to, you know, spoof and use IP changing and that kind of thing. So it detects those automatically. Gets mm. Naughty, naughty. Uh, 987 of you were naughty, naughty. Uh, so we're going to do first the Nuka Cola Edition Fallout Chair. Oh my God, that is so beautiful! Fire engine red. It looks wonderful. You'll be the end. You'll want to sit on the, the the lawn outside in it so everybody can see it. It's that good looking. It is cold, and we have a Mike Spencer from Mike Spencer. Uh, yep, Mike Spencer is declared as the winner. Did Mike Spencer. Way to go, Mike. Good on Mike Spencer. Uh, the way these work, by the way, so uh, I'll try to contact people up for a week. And, you know, sometimes this happens where people don't get back to me for whatever reason. Um, and uh, if a week from today, if they haven't collected it and claimed their prize, then I do another drawing and I'll tell uh, the person through email who won. Uh, Mike Spencer, you're on the clock. Calling Mike Spencer. Uh, we've got now the uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, the 10th anniversary chair. Uh, Wes, oh, my God. Uh, I believe, Wes, something very large arrived at your house. Uh, this 80-pound box arrived at my house, and inside of it is this gorgeous, huge, solid, comfortable just epic looking chair with the uh, Skyrim logo on a 10th anniversary stitched right into the leather, a little arrow pointing directly at the knee. Uh, as you can see from what Ken is uh, sitting in there, these are just really, uh, I can't say enough good things about these chairs. They're wonderful. The only thing that is difficult for me is that it's sitting in like five pieces in my living room right now. Some of because we've been required. so yeah, we, it's been so busy doing the voice of Palooza this past week that they're sitting in there, and my wife just keeps going, "You are going to build this and move it out of here." And yes, I will because it has wheels on the bottom, and once it's done, I'm going to roll it right out here, and I'll be sitting very comfortably on it. So you could be sitting on the same thing that I'll be sitting on if your name is called right now. Can we appreciate the fact that it's a black chair that's going to be in your mm. very dark room? You've got like a whole. If I was, if I had the Nuka Cola chair, it would shine like you know. Wing. Wes's default personality is Lucy and Lachance. <laughs> Dear child of Sithis, let us reach deep within the realms of names, and we'll find out who the Night Mother loves enough to give a chair. And uh, I can't say enough about the Noble Chairs crew over there yeah. all of them since fallout for hope began in december of 2020 they have been totally on board for supporting us with so many giveaways i think this is our uh sixth or seventh chair that we've given away i and mean they one call of these them noble worth... chairs totally but noble noble is really true because these people, people uh they are good people and they're giving these things out for charity to help us out to help us raise these funds without folks like noble chairs we would not have been able to raise $28,000 for Alzheimer's research. So thank you, Noble Chairs. Uh, you are good people and you make excellent rocking chairs. Here we go. Can we get a, uh, in chat, whatever the, whatever the Skyrim chant is for when you're approaching and you're about 
to unlock another thume. Uh, Close row chair. Yeah, let's get let's get whatever that weird <laughs> chant is going in chat here. We're about to pull the the tenth anniversary Skyrim chair. Ooga book. I don't think that's it. Either. I don't think that's it. That's I, you know, <laughs> you're wrong. It, it was a nice try. Let's sit there and nice be. Who's yeah, row chair? Who's row yeah. chair? Yeah. Who's row chair? Here we go. Drawing. Uh, Ivan Pelik has Ivan won. Pelik. Ivan Pelik. The night E E L I C with, an, with a little accent over it. Doo -doo -doo. Ivan Pelik is going to be sitting pretty. Congrats to Ivan. Uh, okay, now we're pulling 10 winners for the Fallout 76 Digital Deluxe Edition giveaway for Xbox. So this is going to be a laundry list. We're pulling 10 right now. 10 names. 10 names. It could be you. It could be your mother. It could be your brother. It could be someone in your family. And then you can take it and use it for yourself. Oh, we've got a lot here. So we got uh, Zachary Wenner. Stephanie Rusis, R U S S I S, uh, Theodore Becker, uh, Brody Malizisco, uh, have Henny Pokutani. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering. If that you. is your real name, uh, Mina G, uh, Reiner Penterling, Pedro Henrique Soros Carvalho, uh, Thomas Sumbury, uh, and Leonard Dawe. Leonard. 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 You're a winner, Leonard. Uh, all right, now for the PlayStation winners, we're drawing 10 there. Who's going to be sitting on their couch with the PlayStation and having a good time? All right, so for PlayStation, we've got Mike Reader, Austin Paolilo, uh, Rob Hester, uh, Jen Emil Piore, I think it is, uh, Philip Denk, uh, Irfan Kol Kolinaka, uh, Yanni Zvanbach, do you only uh, pick names that are hard to pronounce? I don't Ken? know. So, uh, Jet, <laughs> Jet Cameron, uh, Henrique Herrera, Richard Berghoff. Congratulations, one and all. Now for the Elder Scrolls uh, High Isle Online, uh, the Collector's Edition Ooh. giveaway. I'm, I'm going to be jealous for this one. This is this. Tell, tell what's in that one. It's the full game. So it's the full original Elder Scrolls Online plus all previous chapters, including uh, Morrowind and all of those other ones. Mark Arth? Mark Arth, yep. Yeah, go visit me in Mark Arth. I will be the uh, the Ard, uh, Ard Caddick, the despot of Mark Arth. Yep, Ard Caddick. Come say hello. Um, and also the new High Isle DLC that just dropped. And that one has Billy Boyd in it. It does, yeah. Did you see him on the Elder Scrolls stream? Uh, I, I, I did not, uh, well, I saw some of that, but I, I didn't see all of it, but I did get to meet him at awesome con and hang out with him. And I have a nice photo of him holding the Waba Jack. That's so we definitely, so we awesome. crossed the streams. Uh, definitely. That was my precious. So he got to hold my precious. That's awesome. Uh, so Jeffrey Terrell, uh, Junis Vint, Roberta Kane, Alistair Curtin and Tyler M. Congratulations! That, that's for Xbox. All right, so now for PlayStation. Uh, we've got Jenna Olafson, Adam Brown, Lachlan Brown, Cassandra Derensberg, and Eric Hansen. Nice. And the last one here is the PC Steam giveaway, which I'm going to be jealous of. Uh, do, 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 and pulling it. No, Zelix, that's not how this works. Uh, all right, so for PC Steam, uh, Albin Fadidi Farce, uh, Elizabeth Capeta, Maria L., Manu Alo Oli, uh, Zisvan Petrus, Petrus Petruskovsky, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, something, uh, and pulling. And that's it. Our giveaways are completed. Uh, so, with any of those, if any of those people uh, do not respond, uh, then I do another email, I do another drawing, and then I'll... They get about a week? They get about a week to respond? I give them a week, yeah. Okay, so respond, guys. Get up on there. If you won these things, come out and get it. All right, dinner's on. Come and get it. Don't make us wait. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, too. This has been... Do you have any memories of uh, this past week that stick out for you? Oh, my God. Do you know, for me, uh, and it's... I still get, I mean, I don't think getting starstruck by people ever really goes away. Um, 
but I love um, I love hearing your stories. So stories from acting and voice acting, and some of the stories that we got this week out of the panels, um, like Paul Eiding's story about yeah. working with Orson Welles and the limousine that he had separately for his wheelchair. I will. Mm-hmm. I will. I've I've told that story three times to three different people this week. Talk um, about a broad spectrum of stories of actors working oh, with. Man. You had one of Orson Welles and one of Anna Nicole Smith. So <laughs> I mean, both equally on the same acting level. There, the Anna Nicole Smith one was fantastic. Basically, she was completely high. God rest her soul. That's a shocker. <laughs> uh, yeah, the stories have been amazing. And tonight, I uh, have could not stop laughing. Tonight, that was, the, that was some of these. Oh, Some man. of these, like Voice of Palooza tonight, was funny. The uh, the improv, whose apocalypse is it anyway, was a scream. Uh, and even during just some of the panels where we're telling <gasps> oh. stories and talking. God, the uh, the improv that we did uh, with God, it was Sherry Elliker and the pillow. That yes. was amazing. Oh my God! And uh, Ellen McLean uh, with the dating show, where she was yeah. going. Oh my God! I. This this particular panel here that we do, the uh, Voice of Palooza Prime. Normally, I'll go through and I'll clip some of the stuff that, that people thought was the funniest. I'd have to clip the whole damn show. I don't even know what to clip from what we just did. It was it was wonderful. The, uh, yeah, find find one that will uh, make people happy, which would probably not be me as Fox singing. Just saying. Oh my God, Goddess Nerd Wes's cat fingers. His oh, little, the cat fingers. Little kitten fingers. <laughs> That was amazing. I had a great time. The awards that we were giving out uh, that night were were a lot of fun. Everybody yeah. doing their award ceremony speeches and uh, yeah, this this whole thing has been wonderful. And and to be able to hang out with folks like George and Ophelia, and uh, to hang out with uh, I mean, you, you were wonderful uh, hosting a couple of those uh, podcasts. Uh, some folks who were supposed to come join us and didn't get a chance to, we send out our kind regards to, especially Mike Rosson. Uh, who was supposed to be with us here today yeah. uh, for Voice of Blues and has been a, a real staple for us. But Mike's having a little bit of uh, pain with hip issues right now. So if you're out there and you look for a uh, Mike Ross and voice actor on Twitter, uh, send him a note. Tell him that you love him and miss him. He's just the the sweetest human being of, around and th- that we aren't, weren't able to have him here today just makes me sad for him because he loves it. Yeah, Mike Rawson, really a legendary voice actor, was with us for Christmas Carol. We did that for St. Jude. Um, mm-hmm. The voice of most of the the ghouls in Fallout 3. Such an incredible voice. Gob he and Cherry. He can Charon do that voice all day, too. A lot of people such lose a their good voice. Ghoul voice. Can, oh, yeah. Mike Rawson, he's just uh, mm, the best of humans. We love you, Mike. Yeah. We had a lot of voice actors join us. Can I roll down a list of who to thank? Hell uh, yes, go for it. Well, we want to thank uh, Stephen Russell uh, for coming out. Uh, of course, remember him, Nick Valentine, Danny Chirago, uh, Hancock, uh, Jan Johns, who was with us today, and just one of the funniest, sweetest uh, human beings ever. Elizabeth Noon, the voice of the Khajiit, and so many others w- was here. Uh, Peter Jessup, uh, he is a uh, dance, paladin dance. Uh, Paul Eiding, who you know from every game ever made. Paul is wonderful. If you Such got into good. the vault in Fallout 4, it's because he was the one who signed you up at the last second. Uh, John Gentry came, and I think it was terrible that he showed up. And the first thing he did was he told us there was another settlement that he wanted to tell us about. Uh, <laughs> that threw me because, you know, I, I thought, because sometimes if, you know, if people meme you too much, like, yeah. You, I, I, you know, you could be like, that could be like, yeah, I don't want to really listen to that anymore. Yeah, but you thought it was hilarious. That. It yeah. is. I mean, how many times have I, have I been Imperial guarded oh, over true. the years, yeah. you know, and it's, it, you're happy that people like your characters, you know, Christopher Walken, uh, who is, uh, I believe he's, uh, he was in uh, Fallout 4. What was he? Uh, Initiate Clark, uh, Barry Bierne, yep. who is the yep. uh, Golden Saints, uh, Jeff Baker, my Haskell. Uh, and also, he was all the dark elves and Morrowind, and uh, that voice is is iconic. Welcomes you off the boat as Saint Jude. Uh, David Du Bois, all the Altmers from Morrowind. We had a, a Morrowind reunion for the first time in that, how many years? That was amazing. That was the twentieth anniversary of Morrowind. 
Yeah, and he was there, and Catherine Fly was there, and uh, that's where we had Elizabeth Noon uh, jump in with us, and Jeff Baker, and it, I mean, talk about your old home week, that was, you know, hey homies, I remember you, we had a good time. And people asking uh, in chat, these are up, uh, their VODs are right here on the channel, so if you missed any of the panels for Skyrim, Morrowind, mm -hmm. any of those, Oblivion, they're all here for you to view. Yeah, and, and you can still, throughout the next week, if you want to make more donations to uh, Alzheimer's Association, feel free. We would be more than happy to uh, to help spread the good that you are, you are helping spread to us. I uh, want to thank Sherry Elliker, one of my dearest mm -hmm. friends who I've known forever. Uh, worked with her in comedy, uh, in, and she's one of my favorite on-stage partners, and you can tell why after seeing how she performed in the uh, improv segments. Uh, speaking of which, John Patrick Lowry and Ellen McLean, those two, if you saw them here today, first of all, you never expect to get from those two what you get from those two. They are, they, yeah, she's like, She's like, I want to make shark noises. I was like, oh my God, Ellen. <laughs> and because when you're talking to her, she's so, she's so beautifully polished and proper. Mm -hmm. Like you could picture her and John like, oh yes, we're going to go down to the Riviera this week. And I'm she's sure like, they clean up shot. well. Yes. She can, I she love can her. clean up well, and then she should come hang out with us in the low section of town. Uh, and she's always welcome there. Craig Seckler, the adoring yes. fan uh, who showed up for a number of things. We played the board game, Modiphius's uh, Skyrim game. And we played it for almost two hours, and it was the tip of the iceberg. I look forward to when that game comes out, getting that board set up in my house and playing forever. Uh, if you if you like role playing games and you like Skyrim, which is basically a video game extension of role playing games, you're going to love this. Uh, so we thank those guys from Modiphius for coming out and joining us, and I thank Craig for uh, coming out and having a good time. And I don't know, I don't think he wore the wig, did he? We didn't he get didn't. him to wear the wig. I wish he would have. That would have been hilarious. So close. That's okay. Go to go to my uh, TikTok and you'll see him wearing it. And if you all haven't seen it, that Skyrim game I believe is supposed to be out this holiday season. Uh, mm -hmm. The actual physical game, but it also comes with a, a online version of it, which is what they're yeah. playing. And the game is so well designed. You can look for a a, a version of it, a, a, a trial on uh, the tabletop simulator That's right. on it's Steam. It's available now. Yep. So go take a look at that. Check that out. Richard Epcar was here. Richard Epcar has done more vi voices so in video voices. games than most all of us put together. Uh, was the Joker? Was uh, Raiden? Right? Yeah. Raiden in, in Mortal Kombat and is one of the tallest voice actors you'll ever find. I mean, I'm going to be on the uh, the John St. John uh, King Kong cruise and Richard's going to be there. And I'm going to be like Danny DeVito standing between two uh, Arnold Schwarzeneggers in Twins. Isn't he uh, like 6'4"? Is it six? Four? They're both. Well, John's I think John's only about six feet. But yeah, Richard's up there. He's he's, yeah. he's, a, he's a tall fella <clears throat> and an amazing voice. It takes that much physical body to house that much talent, you know? So he's he's wonderful. Alexander Brandon, who a uh, wonderful voice actor from Skyrim and Thief, but also a wonderful composer as well. He joined us, he's a lot of fun. Casey Mangelo from uh, ESO and so many other things. What are some of the, the big uh, things that Casey has done? Uh, a lot of anime. Casey's done Tons a lot of anime. Of anime. Yeah, he's, yeah. Yep, they've, they've become an incredible, um, really incredible, really well-known voice actor. What I and, and again, I, I'll tell this story again real quick. What I love is that they reached out to me and asked me to uh, do a voice for them of the Imperial Guard from Oblivion doing the arrow to the knee line, which I did and put on YouTube and it's still there. You can see it says Merry Christmas, Casey, back around 2010. And then Casey started doing voice work right around then and has just become a professional and was on a panel talking about this stuff with uh there was a uh, craig seckler and it was myself and there was ellen dubin and thank you to ellen for joining us ellen dubin for joining us on the uh, eso panel uh, she had lost someone very close to her to alzheimer's and that's the kind of thing when you ask somebody to do this sometimes all you have to do is ask and other times they reach out to you and she was like we be i believe what you're doing and i want to help and i can't thank her enough for doing that. Um, we had uh, Karen Carbone, Moira Brown come out and join us. And she's just so funny and so talented. And she said the thing for you, didn't she? She said the thing. These are little potatoes. <laughs> she's wonderful. She really is. Uh, Keith Sarabica, who has more credits than maybe even uh, Richard Epgar. 
I could have talked to him forever. He had some incredible stories to tell. I mean, he? and, he's been in so many TV shows, like so many of, of the best TV shows, like through the late 80s, 90s, and X-Files, yeah. Supernatural, you name it, he's been in it. And between him, Jordan Reynolds, and uh, Chris Shula, they all basically narrated every book that's ever been written. Uh, and having all three of them uh, together with us for the Fallout 76 panel was wonderful. So thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Chris. Chip Jocelyn was there with us. I love Chip. Uh, Chip, Chip does the super mutants as well. It always makes me happy to run into a, a fellow super mutant along the way. And uh, we had uh, Paula Tiso, who uh, delightful, very funny. Duchess. Neil, Neil Kaplan has a very dry sense of humor. He does. Yeah. I love that. I love the kind of sense of humor that somebody says something. And if you don't know his sense of humor, you're like, what? Is he serious? Yeah. That when I, when he, the first thing that we uh, did with him, I think was for QuakeCon. And his sense of humor is so dry. I couldn't tell, like, is he like not happy to be here? Does he not like me? But, like, he's just fucking around with you. Yeah. Oh, and, and he does. He will. He was even giving us hell because we said we're doing this for Alzheimer's. He's like, are you doing it for Alzheimer's or is it against Alzheimer's? It's like, OK, thanks, Neil. Important uh, clarification. We're against it. Yeah. We don't like it. So we're against it. Uh, Alex Cesaris came in and what a voice on her. She was able to take time out in the middle of doing jobs. We caught her right in the studio. She was able to jump in and do this. And that's the thing. People taking time out of their every day to come in and join us. Uh, George Ledoux, uh, who you would know yeah. as Duncan Fisher, uh, coming in and uh, spending time with us on Casey's uh, El Gato Pub. And Casey's just the salt of the earth. She is. Bless her. I love her. She's just If you're here, wonderful. Casey, we love you. We love you, Casey. And uh, that was so much fun uh, sitting around. And I think John St. John took the tequila talk portion of that very yeah. seriously. If you if you if you all have not seen it, I highly recommend it. Go over to El Gato Pub's channel um, here on Twitch and you need to see that VOD because that that tequila yeah. talk was wild. It was hilarious. It was wild, man. We had a great time. It was wild. Everybody had a good time. And then uh, we had uh, Matthew Mercer and John St. John. And John, who joined us uh, on the El Gato Pub and is always hilarious. And then Matthew, who joined us here today with uh, Voice of Palooza. You know, I go back to one of my first cons, and it may have been one of their first cons as well. But we all met up at MAGFest 8. And... Uh, you know, I don't want to get uh, too emotional about this, but to, to to have friends like that, that you meet and know as real human beings, wonderful, just the kind of friend that you would make when you're younger. You know how you never make friends when you're older, like you do when you're younger. Yeah, it's There's so just hard. always some grown up thing that's in between. Well, I feel about uh, Matt and John and Jan and John Patrick Lahr and Ellen McLean and Mike Ross and those people, especially in particular, just are in my heart. They're in my heart. And uh, when I look and see what they've done, first of all, a lot of good things happening for John St. John this summer, and I couldn't be happier for him. He deserves it. Yeah. He puts off that Duke Nukem uh, front, and he's very funny, and he loves to say things that are going to make people shake up. But you know what? Sweetest man on the planet sweetest man on the planet and to watch the success that matt mercer has had over the years so happy for him he so deserves it yeah and it's it's interesting that in a business where you look at people who are really really talented sometimes they're not necessarily the best people they're not necessarily the best humans they've got their issues or dog but, but these are the folks you saw here today are the best of people just like you are kenny and i count you among them no i count you among them as it. somebody that uh you get a chance to look into somebody's heart occasionally and see what a good person they are and it's rare and you're a rare bird my friend you're a good man and I love you and I appreciate you. And uh, to be able to do this with all these voice actors, but most especially with you, has meant the world to me. So, well, you mean a lot to me too. Thank you. You're a good friend and you've been an amazing mentor to me. 
well, I see great things. What I just said about Matt Mercer, I feel the same way about you. I think great things are going to happen for you. I think the sky is limit. All I ask of you, my friend Ken, is this. Don't let the darkness in this world, which is always going to be out there, affect your light. Your light is special. Your light shines like a beacon in a dark cave. And you don't let them dim you down. Darkness runs from light. So try to stay good and true and wonderful and loving. Because that's the only way to live. If we allow their darkness to anger us and darken our hearts, our lights will dim. Doesn't mean that we give up any fights along the way. Oh, no but we do it on the side of right. We do it on the side of light. And, and this past week, we were on the side of right and light. And I can't thank you and the gaming community enough. Each and every one of you who donated, each and every one of you who streamed, each and every one of you who reached out to tell your stories about how Alzheimer's has affected you. Uh, it's going to take a little while to process everything, but you have my heart and my gratitude, and I thank you. Thank you. I got some thank yous. <laughs> yeah. Toss them out there. Uh, dr drop one. Drop one, Ken. <laughs> I, uh, I want to thank uh, our sponsors for the giveaways. Um, Noble Chairs, Bethesda and Cinemax. Um, Chris Birch, April Hill from Modifius. Um, wonderful, wonderful people. They Sponsorships and giveaways really help uh, get the eyeballs on what we're doing um it, it really is meaningful um our main event hosts that helped us this week uh eso danny danny oh what a what a great guy and by what the way is, yeah. congratulations on the upcoming nuptials my friend yes zero period george and ophelia zero. oh they were delightful ophelia from bethesda uk absolutely lovely 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 person um they both really that was You've no idea how much because they were sending me a message after like you've no idea how much that meant to them to not just to get to spend time with you but to go back and and hang with the voices um from the games that they they know and love was was really special for them yeah, it was special for us too it was, it was fun shreds from the elgato pub of course we talked about casey, shreds, casey. Uh, my co-star uh jessica star from the united wastelanders network jessica yeah so she just i think she's, she's still here in chat we love you, Jessica, Jessica was great the other day. I was watching uh, you guys go at it for the uh, Fallout London uh, unveiling. and uh, Which blew my mind, the scale yeah. of that mod. I'm really, really excited. As I told him, those mad lads have done a nice job. Yeah. Um, Tom, Mr. Robots from the Robots Radio Network. Tom. Fallout Lorecast. Tom, salt of the earth. Good guy. Scully face. The Atomic Stop, if you're still here, dear, it's it's Scully's uh, birthday week celebration. Oh, what a happy birthday to you there, Scully. What should we do? What should we do? Should I skip rope with your entrails? Oh, it'll be a lovely, lovely birthday thing. Or I'll get you a Wabba Jack. Huh? That way, any present you get. If you don't like it, you can always change it to a mud crab. What's not to love about that? Our uh, also our main event guests. We had Joel Burgess and Nate Perky Pyle, formerly of Bethesda, uh, now off doing their own thing independently. Absolutely, two lovely, yeah. incredibly super talented people. That as much as I love talking to the voices, um, talking to them about the making of Fallout Three and the Point Lookout DLC was just awesome. Considering that was my first Fallout game, so it's, it's oh, talking to I people. I could tell it was, how much you loved it. Oh. I could tell how much you loved. It. Although I do have to say. And I hope I don't sound too catty. I did listen to their uh, tracker yokel, and it sounded more like Homer Simpson than me. <laughs> West did the tracker local from the Fallout 3 DLC. Um, yeah, also uh, Xanther from the Capital Wasteland project team. So the, the Point Lookout mod for Fallout 4, uh, what the Capital Wasteland team are doing is a complete recreation of the Fallout 3 game and its DLC in the Fallout 4 engine. Uh, they are doing insane, insane amount of work. And the Point Lookout DLC is the first thing they've completed. Um, it's available now on Nexus to play, and it's so well done. Completely, faithfully recreated the entire Point Lookout DLC from Fallout 3. So good. It's beautiful. Beautiful. 
uh, our own Alex. They also had really good, by the way, since they worked on the original, they had uh, all sorts of uh, great insight into yes. how things originally were made in order to make this that much more special. Yep. Uh, they were able to, you know, pick the brains to, to figure out how they did certain things so they could replicate it. Um, also, uh, our own Alexander Luther, Dr. Mark Howesworth, and Clint Winbury. Oh, um, how much fun was that? That Portal episode was so much fun. And Alex's script was hilarious. That it was. It was, and it was fun to do. It was fun to play. And is that still airing? Or can people still see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still Heroes of Odd. It's a, a Fallout Skyrim crossover with Wes as Shea Gorath, uh, Karen Carbone, uh, and also Jan Johns. So that was a lot of fun. I loved uh, it. Fallout London leadership team that uh, was on here with me to talk about Fallout London, Prilla Dog, Dansky, Sunny Delight, and Wolfie. Um, they are doing some really impressive, impressive mod work. Um, a map bigger than Fallout 4's map. So if you can visualize that, that's what they've been building. With They also announced a 2023 launch date for the mod, which is I'm really looking forward to. And now everybody's like, 2023, I want it now. I know, we all want it now. <laughs> We grew up with McDonald's. We wanted our way. Um, our Discord staff and moderators, Pedernalis Falls, Stellar Sprout, Lady Goggles, um, Uxo Guy from the Filthy Casuals, Letitia the Lemon, uh, Miss Tentacle, Biowagon, Oregon, uh, I think it's Oregon, um, um, forgive me, I'm mispronouncing that, and Loopy, of course, uh, who was helping out, um, also moderating um, our streams this week, uh, and a very long list of streamers who make this work follow for hope is a name and an idea what makes it work is all of you over 300 of us worldwide that get together for causes that are really important and prove to a very cynical world that you can make a difference when you work together uh justice illage ashley yunker uh dylan and ashley cheeseman love to you both uh brandolin havener uh, Carlo Rossetti, Doris Butler, Emmy Giancari, Johanna Murray, Tracy Turner, uh, Turner, Vita Phoenix, Barmy Gamer, Timothy Oding, uh, Virani, Ari Summer, Vindalia, the real Eleonora. Love you, Ellie. Ellie is the, the first person anytime we do these to be like, how can I help? I absolutely adore her. And a fantastic modder. Uh, T the Khajiit joining us for the first time. It was so well done. Uh, Zero Period, ESO Danny we talked about, Aki Phoenix, uh, Kumo Goro Goro, El Gato Pug, uh, Focus Break, Monochromatic Stains, uh, WMGSO, um, and the entire orchestra team there that they did the uh, the Fallout, it's the Skyrim orchestration that they did was great. Uh, Fenua Turian, of course, Fisty McRib, Strawberry Tiki, Lunarami, April Stiletto, Yuli1961, uh, Juve TV, big big love to your your entire community, uh, Getly, Firebase Prime, Sickliff, uh, Enigmatist217, Lotus of Doom, Ms. Max TV, Morpheus GI, The Purple Wolf, uh, Nefascus, The Elder Streams, um, which is the elder memes on Twitter, who uh, absolutely lovely man, huge community, and helped to to get word about what we're doing on Twitter. Uh, Pineapple, Shantyman, Mizoga the Dork, Kingcraft, Knight Taylor 77, Herno de Benedetto, uh, Jabeski, uh, Shinigami 420, Paladin Josie 76, Nene Chan triple zero, a uh, double zero rather, uh, Count Jasper, Sean Roy 96, Nelia TW, Laser Burns, Trash King Nix, House Voice, uh, Bloody Panda, Saugao, Courier seven, uh, Courier zero seven, Captain Mall seventy seven, Owl Let TV, Jaxus nineteen seventy five, Eric B Rowan, and Space Ferrari. Wow, it does take a village, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. I also want to thank, uh, if we can, uh, Cindy, and Carrie, and Megan, yes, and Sarah ALZ. over at uh, ALZ. Uh, who have been behind us with this whole thing. And we've had meetings every week and they've been more and more excited. And just the folks over at Alzheimer's Association watching as all the gamers around the world just came together to, to, to do this. They're just, they're beside themselves. 
just in awe of what you guys have been able to accomplish and do. And uh, you're making a very loud and proud statement about who we all are. And I'm, I'm grateful to be amongst you, I, to count myself as one of you. And uh, the folks at the Alzheimer's Association, I think, are going to want to get more involved as we move on uh, through the next uh, couple of years. And, and I would like to thank uh, the folks over at Bethesda again who have been just so kind and so wonderful. As you know, Pete Hines has done things for charity with us here. Uh, Jessica Finster, who we reach out and talk to all of the time. Uh, the folks over there have been very supportive in lending their name and allowing me, who does voices for them in their character, to come out and do things like this because they know the good that it does and that they've known for quite some time what the Alzheimer's Association and battling Alzheimer's has meant to me. So I'm grateful to them and I'm grateful to you, Ken, for helping make this happen. The folks at the Alzheimer's Association, you, uh, all of our friends here today, everyone who's been involved, everyone who has sponsored, everyone who has streamed, everyone who has helped behind the scenes make this thing go. There's a lot of passion here. A lot of people who care very deeply. This and I is... thank you. Oh, no, don't. You better not, because then I fucking will. God damn it, Wes, <laughs> don't you fucking cry. This is the ending scene of Goodwill Hunting. Don't you do it, man. No, you... <laughs> it's going to be okay. Not your fault. Um, yeah, particularly Bethesda. Um, Fallout for Hope uses the name, though this is a completely community-led... Um, it's not sponsored, endorsed by Bethesda in any direct way at all. This is completely community. Um, but nonetheless, any time that we have to do something large scale that uses any contracted talent like Wes, we always have to to let them know and get their blessing. And uh, both Todd and Ashley at Bethesda um, mm -hmm. this time around were were really nice to uh, to allow us to to tap as much talent <laughs> that they're contracted to as we did. We we had the who's who of Bethesda games. Um, so it was- And beyond. Really and lovely beyond. that the- we, we also had folks who are with other games and other voice actors who saw this happening, who wanted to reach out and be a part of it. I would have loved to have gotten uh, folks like Jim Ferranda who had mentioned uh, yeah. involved in this. And I think Jim would have done this. We were just running out of slots. So Jim, next if you're year. out there and listening, I love you, man. Next and I year. want you next year right here on this stage. And I want to geek out over Adrian Barbeau next year. I want Adrian Barbeau. Well, you Barbeau. geek out over Adrian Barbeau every year, but next year you want to do it in person. <laughs> Yeah, we had uh, we had a lot of uh, folks who just said, "Yeah, uh, that's." I talk for a living, folks, and I don't know what to even say. Thanks. I feel like we should have music to play us off now. <laughs> yeah, well, they would have been play if they did. They'd have been playing us off a long time ago, Ken. <laughs> From. Uh, the bottom of my heart, and I say this every single time, um, the world sucks. Dark things happen in the world. Um, there's a lot of shit, and it is shit, that is going on right now. Um, that in any given day um, can really take a lot of your life um, and light much less energy right out of you. Um, I feel like every day is is us living in uh, unparalleled times. But this idea that started as a lark, as something to do, has become so much more than I ever thought it would. And it shows me that for all the darkness in the world, for all of the angry, mentally ill, corrupt, toxic forces in the world that are a very loud and local minority, a great good comes when people believe that things can change and work together to do that. That is what Fallout for Hope is in its most simplistic terms. 
that anybody who wants to help can, and together we can do good things for causes that actually matter and for people who desperately need our help. And, hope. Uh, it's the operative word, hope. Like everybody, I have my struggles, and uh, all of you and this really um, makes the days lighter. So I want to thank everyone um, that always gets involved when we do these things. And we'll be back October 11th to end out this year working for St. Jude when we have a very real likelihood of, of raising uh, in total a half million dollars for causes since this started, which is frankly magnificent. A lot of big hearts out there. Yeah. I'm proud, I'm proud to be uh, associated with you all here. Thank you for allowing me to come into your homes. Thank you, Ken, for allowing me to come into your life and uh, thank you for, thank being you for helping make this happen. Absolutely. Well, everybody, before we go, um, we're going to raid and then uh, I am going to uh, announce the winners on Twitter and then I'm going to go on a break because I need one. So I'm going to vanish from socials. I'm going to I'm going to hike down the street with a sling over my pack like the end of the old uh, Incredible Hulk TV series. With the a little whistling life. sound as you go, a little whistling music. Yeah, I'm going to take a, a break from social media to recharge and, and uh, reset and all of that good stuff, which is good for anybody to do. If you're getting overwhelmed with all of the shit going on, the best thing that you can do for yourself right now, stop the doom scrolling and unplug mm -hmm. you need to you cannot ingest that every day it's gonna fuck you up uh all right so let's let's raid into let's see who's streaming and again thank you everyone who's uh been sticking around here i love you all uh let's see who is online is there anybody on the team online that we can raid into anybody on the team who's still fundraising jessica says eli is up for alz uh, what is Eli is up for ALZ. Uh, sorry. Oh, Ele uh, Eleonora. Uh, where's Eleonora? God, I can't even type it. Ele Eleonora. Yes. Uh-huh. Ellie. I, what can I, what can I type? Why can't I find Eleonora? Because your fingers, your fingers thought you were done, Ken. Your fingers thought you were done, and they gave up. <laughs> okay, uh, wait. I can't find her. Uh, uh, there she is. There we go. Really, Eleonora. I should have. Known. Here we go. All right, let's uh, raid into Ellie and uh, pass the love. And uh, bottom of my heart, thank you all. $28,196.60 on the board with uh, some of the teams still streaming for another week to go. So we could see 29, maybe 30, we'll see. But uh, thank you. And good Bless night. you all. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Let's raid the awkward 10 second countdown. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, <laughs> 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. We'll see you in October. So if you look at the bots on there, you can see some.